And the 41,000-seat Scott Field is overflowing tonight with fans who have come to see their Bulldogs. 15th in the nation at 6-1. Face their biggest challenge so far, the undefeated Auburn Tigers. For 33-year-old Mississippi State head coach Rocky Felker, the youngest of a major college program in the country, 1986 has already been a year of celebration. At 6-1, the Bulldogs haven't had this good a record since Felker was their quarterback in 1974, leading the SEC in total offense and leading State into the Sun Bowl. Felker has gone from student to teacher, and his prized pupil is quarterback Don Smith, the soul of the offense. You know, he leads more by going out and doing it than a raw, raw type of a, a leader. And I think uh, his attitude towards winning is really rubbed off on the rest of the players. Smith is a game breaker. He has 533 yards rushing in seven games and has gone over the 100-yard mark four times. But everyone knew that Smith could run the football where he has really improved his passing. 1,260 yards so far, 10 touchdowns and only three interceptions. For Pat Dye and the Auburn Tigers, some thought this would be a rebuilding year. If it was, it's worked. They're 6-0. And they have done it without the legendary Bo Jackson, who had to say goodbye to Auburn and then chose to say goodbye to football. But his departure gave Brent Fullwood a chance to shine. He is number 10 in the country in rushing and leads the world with an average of 9.4 every time he touches the football on the ground. We've got a great one coming your way tonight with Auburn undefeated and ranked seventh at Starkville to face the 6-1 Bulldogs of Mississippi State. After some rain the last couple of days, a perfect night for football tonight. Skies partly cloudy, the temperature is a pleasant 65 degrees. The wind will not be a factor. The rain most likely will not be a factor. We're at Scott Field in Starkville, and they're happy here because their team is very much alive in the SEC race along with Alabama, LSU, and Auburn. Hello, everyone. This is Tim Brando, and welcome to Scott Field, where tonight Auburn is playing for an opportunity to remain unbeaten. And for the Sugar Bowl and the SEC, that is very important with what happened in Tuscaloosa today. For Mississippi State, this is a chance to be 7-1 and one for the first time since the 1940s. They've been in this spot before and have not gotten it done. So tonight, Mike Patrick and Pat McAnally, we indeed find out, are the dogs a pretender or a contender? Tim, they've already won six games. That's more than twice as many as a lot of people thought they'd win all year. And, Pat, I think all, a lot of that credit has to go to Rocky Felton. Well, it's a great American story. You have a hero come home and save everybody. Rocky's the closest thing to a legend they've had here in a long time. And he's brought an enthusiasm and a confidence to this team. But he's brought more than just spirit. He made returning quarterback Don Smith a passer. Now he's beating teams with his feet and his arm. Auburn last year, of course, was a one-dimensional ball club, but they can do so many things on offense this year. Well, Coach Pat Dye came into 1986. He was committed to the passing game. He brought in Pat Sullivan, ex-Heisman Trophy winner, to work with quarterback Jeff Berger, and the results have been great. Not only have they uh, done well because of the passing, it's opened up the running attack. Brent uh, Fullwood would not be averaging 10 yards a carry, almost, if he didn't have the big holes up there with a the spread out uh, defense. So we've got two top 20 teams, a combined 13 and one record in what should be a great game coming up next on ESPN. Saturday night college football is being brought to you by the U.S. Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. By Michelob Light, super premium taste in a less filling beer. Who says you can't have it all? By Dickies, they're America's favorite work clothes, but who says you have to work in them? And by Purolator's new Turbo, the first oil filter designed to tame a turbo's heat. Welcome back to Scott Field in Starkville, Mississippi, where the Bulldog fans are waiting with grand anticipation for this battle against Auburn. Now, tonight, we're going to be seeing a couple of well, a couple of best-kept secrets in the SEC. Brent Fullwood of Auburn and Don Smith of Mississippi State. Pat 
Buckeyes eyes were focused on winning without perhaps the greatest running talent in college football history. Bo Jackson's accomplishments led to the coveted Heisman Trophy. His feats were well documented, but the same cannot be said for the man as to fill the void left by Bo. Brent Fullwood's numbers offensively so far after just six games have made believers out of Tiger opponents. In just six games, Fullwood has proven to be a worthy successor to Bo's legend. And just how does he feel about replacing the Heisman legend? Well, I don't feel that I came in and replaced anyone because if he had four years to play college football, and then I have four, and he just happened to finish his four, and I still have one more to complete. And I just feel his time was up and it's my time to step up. And he, he was, and, but it's a great feeling to be related to a great um, running back as Bo himself was. He's a great competitor, and he is an outstanding athlete. Uh, he's, of course, he's not as big as Bo. He weighs 200 pounds, 2'5", and got tremendous speed, and, and uh, is a tremendous competitor. Well, I think Brent is in a class with Bo Jackson. He's got great ability. He's got good leadership. And um, every Saturday, he puts out 100% effort. So if you look at some of the runs he's made, a lot of times there weren't some holes there, and he's made big plays out of them. So he's a, a game-breaking type of player and, and a big advantage for our team. In all, his accomplishments have many indeed wondering if he really is as good as Bo was. I had the luxury to recruit Bo Jackson out of high school, and so I've known both real well, and I couldn't tell a difference between the two of them. Brent is a powerful, fast, uh, hard runner that runs at full speed on every play, carries the ball. You know, I think play after play, he's a better running back than Bo Jackson. I think Bo at times didn't run like he could, but yet certainly when the hole was there, he would utilize his talents and go the distance. But but uh, forward, just play after play, whether there's a hole there or not, he's always trying to make something happen. Now, Mississippi State's best runner is not a running back, but quarterback Don Smith is a great runner, too. Well, I don't know if there's a player in the country that means more to, uh, to his football team than, than Don Smith means to our football team. The thing that makes Don Smith what he is is really the way he competes, you know, the way he goes about things, uh, how important winning is to him. And, uh, you know, I don't know if he's the best player in the country, but certainly I think he's one of the top two or three in the country and very uh, deserving of any uh, honors that might come his way. Smith's versatility is indeed what makes the Bulldog offense tick. But what does Don enjoy most, running or passing? Well, I like the running part of it because it gives me an opportunity to put pressure on the defenses when I'm rolling out on the corners and, and um, the running backs getting the, getting the guys down and enabling me to get on the corner. I think that's a big asset of my game is being able to get on the corners and try to make something happen for my offensive ball club. I'd say that Don Smith is the best running and throwing quarterback that we've ever played against. And he is a great athlete. He's smart. He does a great job with the offense. And uh, he, he can do it all extremely well. I've been a competitor ever since I've been playing football. And my teammates, you know, they look up to me and so forth and, and expect me to make certain plays. And I try to do just that. And each time I'm on the field, I try to make things happen for my team and try to get the ball in the end zone. A couple of fine players there, and Larry Burnett and Bino Cook are back at our studios. And I tell you, fellas, you talk of Fullwood and Don Smith, we may be seeing tonight two players that America just hasn't seen enough of. Well, we're going to let them see them tonight, aren't we? We're going to take a look at them. Two good football players, two good football teams, only one loss between them, two good football coaches, Pat Dye and Rocky Felker, both of them doing a great job with good programs. What do you think is going to win tonight? Well, Mississippi State could go to the Sugar Bowl, believe it or not. They lost to Southern Mississippi 28-24. to The race is all messed up. I think Auburn will win, Larry, but I think it's going to be close. Auburn 21, Mississippi State 20. 21-20. All right, we'll take a look and see how Bino does a little bit later on. We'll be back to tell you some of the games we'll be tracking throughout the evening, and we'll do that when we return. So stay with us. team and his fans all geared up for tonight's encounter against the Auburn Tigers. Now here they are. Felker, 33 years of age, living the dream along with his Mississippi State Bulldogs. And here they come. The Bulldogs and the Tigers 
Bruins of Auburn in an SEC Battle Royale. Pat McAnally and Mike Patrick will have the kick in them. Dave Auburn brings his club in here 6-0, their best start in 12 years. He has won 48 games and lost only 18 in his sixth season. And Rocky Felker, the rookie head coach in 33, the youngest Division I-A coach in the country, is 6-1. What a start for him. Auburn has won the toss, elected to receive. Mississippi State will kick it off. Artie Cosby. And he will be kicking to a three-deep arrangement. James Joseph, Shan Morris, and Tommy Agee. Agee, the man in the middle, waiting at the five-yard line. He's averaged 23.3 yards to return. And yes, his dad was the Mets, Tommy Agee. This crowd is really wired. And Agee, driven a yard deep in the end zone, and bring it out. And he's driven out of bounds at the 19-yard line after a gain of 21 on the return. This is Jeff Berger, the junior quarterback who has already thrown 924 yards this year. He'll run the offense. Brent Fullwood, the tailback on his way to a 1,000-yard season. In place of Bo Jackson, the receivers are solid. Tillman can be spectacular. The line has been outstanding. Tamborello and Searles are two of the best around. Fullwood and A.G. are the running backs behind Berger. That's Bolton in motion. Fullwood. He'll get four. He is averaging 9.4 yards a carry. Mississippi State's defense, Butts and Simmons have had good years inside at linebacker. Cedric Course leads the team in tackles. The secondary doesn't give up a lot. They are number eight in the country against the pass. But the first thing they'll have to do, Pat, is stop the run. Well, that's what Auburn's known for. Although they're throwing the ball better this year, you've got to stop that running game. Berger, number four in the United States in passing efficiency. Second down, five yards to go. A.G. Only got a couple. Stacked him up at the 27-yard line. Man on the bottom of the pile, Darren Martin, number 58 on the inside linebackers. And Reggie Ware will check into the ball game at fullback. Ware, a short yardage specialist. They'll go with two tight ends as Frank Thomas, number 87, also checks in. And we've got a third and two situation for the Auburn Tigers, who are averaging 422 yards total offense and almost 40 points a game. They'll cut it outside. Fullwood, first down and more to the... 35, make it the 36-yard line. Well, the short yardage and goal line, you'll notice, they're going to be over a balance on the left side. They're going to pitch the ball, and Fullwood almost breaks this for a touchdown. They have an extra tackle over on that left side to open it up. He just cuts outside, and this is a game-saving tackle right there, and they'll need that from their secondary all night. The corners and the safety are going to have to make those tackles. Asa Bennett, the redshirt freshman defensive back out of Madisonville, Texas, had to make this tackle, and it's a first down for the Auburn Tigers. Berger play action. A lot of time over the middle, and it's complete. He's got Scott Bolton, who is starting in place of the injured Trey Gaines, and he just ran it over the middle and was wide open, and Berger laid it in there. Well, this illustrates a new offense for Auburn. They set it up with a number of runs. Now on first down, they're going to go with the play action pass, the full they'll fake it. And Bolton will be wide open across the middle. They've got the secondary all spread out to stop the run. Perfect throw. Nice first down. Bruce Plummer, an excellent coverage man, was the guy who had to make the tackle. They'll go back to running up the middle with A.G. And A.G. gets to the 45 where he's stacked up by the center of that defense. And there is Butts at 270 pounds out of Atlanta, Georgia. Mike, one difficulty running against uh, Mississippi State is they switched after the Tennessee game to a 4-4 defense. So they have eight men right up there on the line of scrimmage. It's going to be important for Auburn to throw that ball to loosen them up. Butts is second on the team in tackles, as you saw. The uh, other interior lineman, Michael Simmons, is third. That's a little unusual to have your interior lineman leading the team in tackles. Second and eight. Gaines in the ball game in motion. Fullwood on the toss. Got it back, and they stop him shy of the 40. Gang tackle. 58 is Martin, 53 is Cedric Course. Course is the number one tackler coming into this ball game. He has 93 on the season. That's a lot of tackles. And you used an operative word there for this defense. Uh, they have gang tackling. They have nine guys with over 40 tackles, and that's what they need to stop this offense. Tim Jesse will come in for Auburn at tailback. 
And this is the uh, starting left tackle, Jim Thompson, limping off. And Pat Johnson, number 68, will come in for him. It's a good interior line for Auburn. But Fullwood comes out of the ball game at tailback. Jesse comes in on the third and four situation. Fullwood is probably not going to be in there on passing downs. They haven't. He hasn't caught a pass all year. Gain us in motion. A.G., the only one left in the back. Plants on the back side. Coming hard was Jesse Anderson, the outside linebacker. He gets his second sack of the season, and Jeff Berger never saw it coming. Oh, the crowd loves it. Mississippi State's going to have to gamble sometimes on defense. They're blitzing both middle backers, and on the left of your screen, here comes the safety and just nails it. And the punt by Brian Schulman. They'll let it bounce. And it's inside the 15, dies at the 14-yard line. We have a timeout here in Starkville, Mississippi, after a 38-yard kick. Ball club, and he will be a marked man tonight by the Auburn defense that is number one in the nation against scoring, giving up only 7.8 points a game. Peterson Robinson, the running back behind him. Ouch. Tracy Rockers, preseason All-ACC, came through for a big hit. Here is the rest of the Mississippi State offense. Peters and Robinson both averaging better than four and a half yards of carry in the backfield. Clark and Hadley both very good receivers. The offensive line has only one senior, that's left tackle Alvin Robinson. Loss of two on that last play. 28 is Taylor. He is now in there at the fullback spot, along with Marcus Bush, number 22. This is Bush on the delay. Got outside. Flag is down. Bush still on his feet over the 20 to the 24-yard line. Chip Powell had to make the tackle, but the penalty flag was thrown in the middle of that play. And it looks like they'll bring it back. Illegal use of hands. Al Ford, our referee tonight, calls it. Take a look at Auburn's defense, which has been terrific this year. Rocker and Bruce, very, very tough up front. The linebackers, Crane and Phillips, number one and two in tackles. Crane has stepped in as a transfer out of Memphis State. They have lost All-American safety Tom Powell to a knee injury in the secondary, but still have a good one, led by Kevin Porter. Pat Dye, a very quiet coach who has uh, just gone along winning 48 games, losing only 18. Penalty for Mississippi State will knock them back inside their 10. They'll make it second down and 17. Dangerous territory down here for quarterback Don Smith. They'll run the option, keep it himself. Smith hangs on, flattened at the eight yard line. And really drilled by Shan Morris, the free safety. He moved from strong safety because of an injury to All-American Tom Powell. So going against Don Smith defensively, coming in. Pat Dye is going to assign a man to him on every single play. And Shan Morris is going to be right now. He's going to come into your screen and take away the run from Smith. That's their greatest fear. All he has to do all over the field is run down that quarterback. Marvell McKelpin, number 37, was in it. Fullback on that play. And right now they've got 33 Robinson and 39 John Moore. They like to throw to Moore out of the backfield on long yardage situations, and they've got 30 15 right now. Smith out in the flat, and that's complete to Moore, but whistles and stopped the play. I think it was too much time. And it is a delay against Mississippi State. And it, doesn't, it really doesn't matter how good an option team you are. You don't want to be in second and 17 situations. Mississippi State has to avoid those. Rocky Felker, a storybook start at his alma mater. Played quarterback for this club. And you don't think he's got him fired up? They had never had a sellout at this stadium, which is capacity 41,000 until tonight. And they've got 42 plus in here. They love it. Third and 20 now as the penalty was half the distance to the goal. And Smith wants to throw out of his end zone. Pumps and wants it deep. And it's knocked down, intended for Hadley. Good coverage by Kevin Porter, who had it covered all the way, and Mississippi State is going to have to punt it away. Well, this is an excellent job by cornerback Kevin Porter because 
As Smith rolls out here, he pumped just before he let the ball go deep, and Porter did not go for the fake on the down and out, stayed with the receiver the whole way and knocks it away. It's a nice job of defense. He was on him man-to-man -man all the way. Auburn is only giving up 80 yards a game on the ground, 273 yards total offense. This is Tommy Parks, who has split the kicking duties. Neither one of them has been satisfactory. And he is kicking to Alex Sperlin. Takes a Mississippi State bounce and gets to midfield. 46-yard kick with a roll. Timeout here in Starkville. It's nothing, nothing. First quarter. All you need now is a good. Nothing with 9.43 to go in the first quarter. Auburn will have the ball at midfield. Their second offensive possession. Bobby the Tiger here, and about 8,000 Auburn fans made the trip. Duke Donaldson is in the wide receiver spot. Jim Thompson, the left tackle, by the way, injured earlier, is back in the ball game. And they'll give it to A.G. Muscles his way for about five yards. Bottom of the pile, Cedric Course. Well, Tommy Agee is a real rarity in college sports. He's a four-year starter here at fullback for Auburn. And I talked to Pat Dye. His statistics are down a little bit this year, and basically because they've had the lead so early, they haven't had to use him. A nice luxury. Second and four. A.G. three carries 11 yards. This is Fullwood, the big man. And Fullwood looks like he's got the first down at the Mississippi State 40. Let's go to Tim Brando on the sideline. Tim? Fellows, the left tackle for Auburn Thompson was injured on the last series. He is back in, but his, his left knee has been heavily, heavily bandaged. It's questionable if he'll last beyond this series. We'll find out. The left tackle, number 54 of Auburn. Thank you, Tim. We've got nine minutes to go. First half, keeping you up to date on Fullwood. Four carries, 21 yards, an average of 5-3. Came into the game averaging 9.4. He'll get it on the delay. Got about four yards on that one. Jesse Anderson, number 90, was in on the stop, along with Cedric Course, 53. We'll bring up a second and six situation. Yeah. Fullwood comes in averaging 114.5 yards a game, number 10 in the United States. Running it out of the eye, Trey Gaines, the man in motion. Forward on the toss, student body left, and they've got him this time. And another great play by Jesse Anderson, the sophomore from West Point, Mississippi. Well, Auburn's trying to run their strong sweep left to the wide side of the field with Fullwood. But Jesse Anderson, number 90, is going to come up and make this play out of the secondary. That's two big plays he's made in the backfield already, and that's the only way to stop those sweeps in that option. You've got to stop them in the backfield. You can't let him go downfield. That was A.G.'s man. He couldn't get the block, and we've got a third and ten. Mississippi State trying to dig in, and Berger to throw another blitz. Out to A.G. in the flat. First down and more. A.G. to the 14-yard line. The last time they blitzed and they won, this time they blitzed and they lost. Well, this is an excellent call by the offensive coordinator. They have the wide side of the field to the right. They're going to throw a screen back to the short side. They get four blockers out. And there's really only one man to stop this play. And when Tommy Hage gets the ball in the open field, you're not going to bring him down. It's excellent blocking all the way. But really, that was the call. That's an instance where the offense worked against an excellent call. Good block by Tamborello, the center, and Vincent Jones, the left guard, downfield. First and ten, Auburn. And they'll go with Reggie Ware, their short yardage fullback. Got maybe two. Stacked up in the middle by Butts, 92, Simmons, 96, and Gary Frank, 54, usually around the ball. There's Pat Sullivan, the uh, former, one of the greatest college quarterbacks that ever played the game. Led his team so many times, they added him to the staff this year to work with Jeff Berger, the quarterback, and he's done the job. Second and seven, his favorite receiver was Perry Beasley, and boy, did they hook up. Delay, full one, first down. To the goal line, but no touchdown. Stopped a foot short. Fullwood exploded up the middle. Well, this is where Fullwood is so effective. They go wide, they go wide, then all of a sudden they'll trap right up the middle with him. And once he breaks that line of scrimmage, he is so fast. Agee with a nice block right there, takes out the backer, and now he just splits it. 
That's it. This offense is spreading out the defense this year with the passes and the runs wide. And now they can run up the middle with that big offensive line. They'll go with a full house backfield. Both fullbacks in there. AG 30 where? 26. Or 36, rather. And they've got the touchdown with Reggie Ware. That's the seventh rushing touchdown of the season for Reggie Ware, and Chris Knapp will come on to try the point after. This is an offense that's averaging 39.7 yards a game. Knapp hooked it, but still got it. He's perfect this year, 32 out of 32. Once again, they go with the unbalanced line left. They have a lot of big bodies right there on the left-hand side. He just dives right over. They just overpower people. And if the defense does shift over, they're going to option back to the right. It's an excellent scheme. 6.26 to go, first quarter, 7-0 Auburn. The 740 Turbo Wagon by Volvo. Until Ferrari builds a wagon, this is it. Play the mascot of Mississippi State. Probably doesn't get a treat after Auburn scores. His team's down 7 0. And this is Chris Knapp to kick it away. The center deep man, number 36, Michael Robinson, has averaged 25 and a half yards a kick. And there is a flag down before the kickoff. And the official signals illegal procedure against Auburn. That'll cost him five yards. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. <laughs> I don't think Pat Dye has either. I haven't seen that one. But uh, the nice thing about having a dog as your mascot is even when you're losing, you know he'll stick with you. So you know Bully's still with <laughs> them. Right. They're down 7-0, but he'll come back. Loyalty, loyalty, loyalty. I have no idea what a procedure call would be before you kick off the football, but it costs Auburn five yards, so now they have to kick it off from the 30, and Robinson will move up to his five-yard line. Short kick. Taken by one of the up men at the 20. It's picked off by Johnny Gosio, and Gosio goes out to the 38-yard line. Chip Powell makes the tackle. Good field position for State. There's the scoring drive, 51 yards. And it took them seven plays for a 7 nothing lead as Ware got his seventh touchdown. The 38-yard line for Don Smith. Last time he had the football, it was inside his own 15. Hadley is the man in motion. Smith on the option, keeps the football, gets to the 44, make it the 45-yard line before they drive him out of bounds. Brian Smith, number 90, was over there along with Powell and Kurt Crane, number 39. Crane really gets a lot of credit from his teammates as a leader on this ball club. He's a transfer from Memphis State, and it's not often, Pat, you get a transfer student that can come in and make that much of an impact. Not really, and he made uh, 79 tackles at Memphis State in 1984, and he had to sit out all of 1985 NCAA regulations. He comes back, and he's the leader of the team in 1986 here at Auburn. Don Smith has eight yards on two carries. That's as much as he got all of last year on the ground against Auburn. Smith to throw. It's a little delay to Peters. Peters gets to the 49-yard line. It'll be very close to a first down. Crane again on the tackle. Rodney Peters out of Tucker, Georgia. Well, we just talked about Kirk Crane, inside linebacker number 39. Let's see him make a play here. From the left side, he'll come across laterally and it'll take him right on. It's a nice tackle that Peters had full speed in when he was running into him. And they will measure for the first down. It's not unusual for Auburn to have the lead in a football game. In 360 minutes of football coming into this game, Auburn had trailed for two minutes and 20 seconds all year. <laughs> and it's a first down for Mississippi State. If you are really interested in statistics, you could go through Auburn and find some beauty. Uh, Mississippi State would like to add to that list of how many times they have been behind. Right now, they're concerned about catching up. Down 7 nothing with 5.53 to go in the first quarter. Pat Dice says Don Smith may be the best athlete in the country. 
He wants to run, now he throws and threw it too high. Intended for Hadley, good coverage by Kevin Porter, preseason All-SEC defensive back. And Smith just let that one get away from him. Well, they're gonna have to roll out a lot because of uh, Rocker, Roland, and Hill, the three inside men for the Auburn defense are very strong, very quick. Rocker, we mentioned earlier, preseason All-American, is gonna be all over the quarterback unless you can break contain and get outside just like that. He's a player and so is Andre Bruce. Well, they've only given up three touchdowns defensively in six games. They have talent all over the field. And they only have two seniors on this starting unit. So they've done it with a lot of youth. Second and ten, Mississippi State. Smith straight back this time. Throws it out in the flat, complete to Calvin Robinson. And Robinson can't get away from Gary Kelly. Playing on a bad ankle. Out there in the flat and made the tackle. So Auburn has had the answer to just about anything Mississippi State has thrown out. So you have to be very patient against this Auburn defense. As we said, they don't give up a lot of points. As explosive as Don Smith is, it's going to be tough to get behind that zone. They play a deep zone. It's tough to throw deep over them. So they're going to have to be patient, try to pick up some first downs and nickel and dime them until they get them to loosen up. Loss of two on the last play, so it's third and 12. Big play for Mike Don Smith, rather. Sixth in the country in total offense a game. Back to throw, three-man rush. Deep over the middle and knocked away. Great play by Shan Morris, the free safety. Just hot there. I'm just mentioning the secondary. They play a lot of zone. A three deep zone. They're going to roll up the corner short. Then they drop the other corner and the safety deep right in the middle of the field, as you see. Now watch. He's just going to play center field right in the middle. He almost intercepts this ball. You cannot throw the ball into that zone. Got to go either underneath it or around it on some sweeps. He was throwing for Lewis Clark, the former All-SEC tight end, who they have moved the wide receiver. But on fourth and 12, Tommy Parks will have to punt it away. That's Alex Sperlin, although his name is pronounced Ellick. He spelled A-L-E-X, pronounced Ellick. He was deep to receive the punt. He'll get it at the 17-yard line. And he's dropped at the 17-yard line. 36-yard punt. 4.50 to go first quarter, 7-0 Auburn. Here's your first quarter story. Auburn undefeated, ranked seventh in our ESPN poll this week, leading 7-0. Not good field position this time. They'll start it from the 18 with AG. Gets to the 21. Hanging on to an ankle, number 40, Jeremiah Sangster, who splits time at one of the inside linebacker spots with Darren Martin. AG and Ware both play a lot in the fullback spot. Ware especially in those short yardage situations. Call it a game of three, so it's second and seven for Berger. Fullwood on the toss. Still on his feet. Great balance get to the 29. Cedric Course got there, but he got there late after a five block by Stacy Searles. One thing about Brent Fullwood is his ability. They talk about all the time, not just his speed, but his balance. May not be as big as Bo Jackson, but he has a very good balance. He spins a lot, like Chuck Foreman used to do. He'll come out of a tackle and keep his feet run right over the guy. First and ten for the Tigers. Berger wants to throw. All day to throw. Now he's being chased, and they got him. Sacked at the 18-yard line. And it was Jerry Leggett, the defensive end, who makes the stop. But that wasn't the line's fault, Pat. Uh, Jerry Leggett will get credit for a sack on this, but they should give this one to the secondary. Straight drop back, and he has no one open. They faked a screen to the left, and they read the split in. He wasn't open. He had nowhere to go, and he tucked it, which really all he could do as a quarterback. He had no one open. He didn't force the ball. And that's one key to the Auburn offense this year. They've cut down on the interceptions drastically. Second down and 20 for the Tigers. Little delay, they'll give it off to Tim Jesse. A flag is down as Jesse is buried after crossing the 20. Jeremiah Sangster, number 40, again in on the stop, and we'll check the penalty for you. Officials talking it over between themselves, and now they're speaking to Cedric Course. But a dead ball foul, encroachment against offense. So that happened before the play. And apparently somebody either didn't blow a whistle or the players didn't hear it. That's the third or fourth time we've seen it this year, and I still haven't figured it out. Now, Auburn's being creative with their penalties. They've oh, had a couple of them I've never seen. Offense lining up offside. Still got second down. 
So it's still second down, but now 25. Here's some scores. Big game tonight in Baton Rouge. North Carolina and LSU scoreless. Arkansas and Houston scoreless. Another first quarter score. We, it will keep you up to date with everything that's going on. Georgia Tech leading Tennessee, second quarter. And there's one everybody in Pittsburgh is fired up over. Duquesne with a two-point lead. They'll give it off to Tim Jesse. Jesse at the 30, 35, 37-yard line. The senior from up, Alabama, rips off his biggest gain of the year. Well, Auburn's one of the few teams that second and 25 can run the ball and pick up 23. Right in the middle of your screen, Tamborello, All-America returning. They say he's a definite first-round draft choice. No problem handling him. That opened the hole, he just split it, and the rest was the running back's job. 23-yard gain for Jesse, his biggest run of the year, but it's still third and two. Even after a 23-yard gallop, full house backfield. Jesse misses the toss. Berger recovers at the 24-yard line. It didn't even look like he knew the ball was coming. Well, this is uncharacteristic of the Auburn offense, that's for sure. Just a simple pitch. Berger gets the ball and pitches it to Jesse, and it's like he never saw it. Right over his hands. They're very fortunate to recover this. Fitch will try to get in the way and stop it. And they'll have to punt it away. That was no again, they'll let it bounce. It's at the 30, rolls all the way to the 25, and Milton Smith, back to get the uh, punt, could not pick it up, and it goes 51 yards. ESPN's live presentation of CFA football will continue next week when Penn State, after a great win today at Alabama, visits Morgantown, West Virginia. Our coverage begins at 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 Pacific. Chris Berman, Larry Burnett, and Bino Cook will host the Mercury College football scoreboard show. Mike, one way to beat this uh, three-deep zone that Auburn's playing would be to hit your tight end, Heath Jackson, 86 for Mississippi State. They've got to start getting those passes. Smith on the option. And they're just all over. He gets to the 27-yard line, and he is buried. Shan Morris came up from the secondary. Andre Bruce, one of the outside linebackers. And wherever Smith goes, you're going to see white jerseys. Well, it's difficult to run uh, an option against this team because they have their three men up front who are very tough, and then they have four backers who cover the field very well, make a lot of tackles. Smith. One out of four in the air, but that was a swing pass that lost two yards. Roll out to the tight end. And he's got a completion up to Hadley at the 38-yard line. Hadley out there covered very well. Porter was in the vicinity, but Smith put it on the money in one of those little short tosses. He had Jackson, the tight end, wide open on that play. He sprinted, and he just delayed right in front of the ball. It would have been even a bigger play. You've got to respect Hadley's speed out there. He's a sprinter, and is averaging 24 and a half yards a catch, so you know he can go deep. It is a first and 10, Mississippi State. And they'll give it to Taylor, the fullback, the first time they broke broken one on the ground. Porter made the tackle, but he crossed midfield. Michael Taylor out of Louisville, a 200-pound sophomore fullback. Well, they're just going to give the ball in the belly to Michael Taylor. They've run the option a number of times. This time, Auburn overplayed it. They pursued too far to the outside. They didn't take him. It's right up the middle. Easy play for him. And they nice cutoff blocks by the uh, guards, too. And Pat, they had not been giving the ball to the fullback. Smith wasn't even making a real good fake on that play. Ball spotted the Auburn 49. They give it to the fullback again. This time, Robinson crosses to the 44 before Edward Phillips makes the tackle. So I think they saw the same thing we did, the fact that the middle was a little soft because they were trying to make sure to cover Smith. I think it's tough to beat them on the perimeter. They're going to have to go with uh, short passes over the middle, some nice runs like that from the fullback, then they break it outside. We're down to five seconds to go here in the first quarter. Let's see if Mississippi State can get off another play on second and five, and they will not. That is the end of the first quarter here at homecoming in Starkville, Mississippi, where more than 42,000 people have seen Auburn score the game's only points and lead 7-0. He's close to setting an NCAA total offense record. Live at 9 Eastern on ESPN. As we get ready to start the second quarter, there is one of the Don Smith number 15 buttons, and who better to wear it than his mom, Carrie Smith going to be a very proud lady. Her son has turned in a great performance this year. Myers, the man in motion. Fake it to Taylor. Give it to Taylor. 
Boy, did he take a shot as he got to the 40-yard line. Porter came up and put a shoulder pad right under his chin after Arthur Johnson had a hold of it. Taylor, you know, just another short stroll across the field. And Marvell McKelfin will come in at fullback, number 37, as Taylor goes to the sideline on third and two. Smith on the option. Here they come. And Andre Bruce buries him at the 43-yard line. The big guy, 228-66, just drew a beat on Don Smith, and he never had a chance. They're going to have to run the fullbacks. He's playing outside linebacker like a defensive end. He's so fast, top of your screen. He's going to run him down from behind. Can't even see. There it is. He just sliced in, slanted in. There's, again, it's very difficult to run that option the third and short. If you can't overpower the people, if you can't get the corner quickly, then the pursuit's going to get you just like that. They have obviously made up their mind that Don Smith is not going to beat them running, and the plays that have been successful have been those fullback plays. Sperlin is deep to receive as James will punt. It's off a high floater, and Sperlin calls for the fair catch at the 12-yard line. We have 13.36 to go in the game. Still Auburn by a touchdown. Quarter. And take a look at what Auburn has done, especially defensively, to teams here in 1986. Six points in the first quarter they've given up. 15 in the first half. 172 for themselves. That's incredible. First and 10. Forward back in there and tailback, and he's got it on the toss. Stays on his feet. It's a foot race. And Fullwood is going to go 86 yards for a touchdown. snap for the point after he's got it and Auburn with an 88 yard run officially leads by well, this two is what makes out. Brent Fullwood so special we said it earlier he has the ability to keep his balance and break tackles just a simple pitch right this play is stopped for about a five yard gain he breaks two tackles and then it's off to the races he is so fast but the key again, he broke two top, two guys hit him at the same time, and he only had a couple yards from the sideline. He kept his balance, and he was gone. Let's watch Ben Tamborello right there, 55. He's gonna cut him right there and get him the corner. Once he got the corner, it was up to him to break the tackles. You don't run very far when you don't have a good offensive line, and he certainly has one there at Auburn. Fullwood averaged 9.4 yards a carry coming in. He was just warming up. I mean, 128 yards and a little over a quarter tonight. Well, he almost broke one earlier. We said earlier that the defensive backs are going to have to make those tackles. If they miss, he's going to have some long runs. They had a short yardage play earlier. He almost broke for 60 yards. That one he got in the end zone. He'll break out the bow who button. Nap set to kick off to Michael Robinson. And the crowd has been taken out of the ball game by this Auburn offense. High short kick. Robinson at the 12. 30, 31 yard line driven out of bounds by the Auburn special teams. Let's check in with Larry Burnett in the studio for an update. Larry? All right, Mike, they are at halftime in Atlanta, Tennessee, and Georgia Tech all tied at seven. Tech scored first, then in the second quarter, Charles Wilson on the two-yard run for Tennessee, up and over, 7-7. Seven to seven. That was the score late in the second. That's the score at halftime. A couple of other scores to update you on. LSU is leading North Carolina by the score of 3 to nothing. That one is in the first. And in the Southwest Conference, Houston is leading Arkansas, also 3 to nothing. also first quarter. Robinson, the fullback, straight up the middle, gets to the 33. That is really the only offensive ground play that has worked, and Rocky Felker has gone to it more and more as we've worn into the second quarter. That 88-yard carry was the second longest rush in Auburn history, 88 yards. 
and a beautiful run. Showed power, balance, and speed, everything you'd want in a running back. Second and seven, Don Smith on that half roll. Throws to Hadley, complete at his own 46-yard line. Porter on the coverage, but it was a strike from Smith. Well, they completed his pass earlier. Fred Hadley has a lot of speed. Number 25, their flanker. Don Smith's able to get outside now. He's just rolling. He'll roll right to him. Hadley runs him off. He's scared of that deep pattern. Nice little square cut to the sidelines. Nice throw. Porter had five interceptions a year ago. Preseason All-ACC. He has not picked off one this year. Oh, they're going away from him a lot of the times. Very good coverage. Now. Option. They'll pitch it back this time, and Bush is buried in the backfield by Gary Kelly. Marcus Bush, 180-pound sophomore, never had a chance, and the outside option game has simply not worked so far. Now, Gary Kelly has shown that uh, this is the second play he's made right in the backfield. Sure tackle, and he's playing with a bad ankle. Right here, if you stop Smith, then you can uh, key on that deep back at the tailback, and that's what they're doing. They're taking a man-to-man. -man. It's like basketball. One guy's got the quarterback, the other guy's got the tailback. The only thing that's working is the fullback right now. The loss of five, second and 15. And Smith is going to be in a half the throw situation. Throws from Myers incomplete. Just gunned that one past him. Arthur Johnson, number 40, was the closest man to it, but he was open. Updating some scores for you. And Los Angeles and the Islanders tied at three in the National Hockey League. Still hard to believe that hockey has started. Basketball starts this weekend. Buffalo and Hartford, no score. Toronto over Quebec. Keep you up to date on all the college football tonight, too. Third and 15. Three-man rush, and Smith rolls away from the pressure. Tipped and incomplete. Good defensive play by Alvin Briggs, who comes in on nickel coverage and tipped it away. And Smith, I think, is getting to be a little bit frustrated right now. Well, actually, Smith made a nice throw on this. He rolls left. Here's the secondary. Again, they play a, a lot of zone. They just want to drop back force the quarterback with their front five guys and then sit back in the zone and make them make bad throws. That's why they have so many interceptions, 12 so far. It's awful tough to get people open. Here he is. He cuts it, takes it right away. And remember, he's got deep help behind him. That's why he can gamble on the play. Parks is in to punt. Alex Perlin standing at his own 19-yard line. Parks averages 38.5 on the year. No rush. Got away beauty this time. Sperlin back to the 17. No fair catch. Got outside. Look out, he's got the wall. And they get him at the 45-yard line. They almost had him. He got away and broke it for 25. Well, they set up a beautiful wall on this, and I agree with you, Mike. I think everybody expected him to fair catch his balls. Nice high punt. It wasn't that long. They were down on it. He just got outside right there, kept his balance. Now they have a beautiful picket fence. And the best thing about this play is there was no penalties. It's so nice to see a punt return that's clean with no penalties. And we have a timeout with 11.40 to go. First half, Auburn by two TDs. Auburn leads at 14 to nothing. Jeff Berger will have Tim Jesse, number 25, and Reggie Ware, number 36, as the running backs behind it. As they'll start from their own 45-yard line, Berger to throw. And the receiver, Trey Gaines, slipped and couldn't make the cut. Pretty good coverage by Dwayne King, a drop back from a linebacker spot. Here's what they did last week in their first four possessions did Auburn against Georgia Tech. All relatively long drives and scored three touchdowns and a field goal, and they're two for four tonight against Mississippi State. Hasn't been a weakness shown in this Auburn offense or defense yet, and they've done great on special teams, too. Thank you, Jesse, on the blitz. Flag is down, and so is Berger at the 38-yard line. And the sack will go to Dwayne King, number 49. Alex we'll check Berger, the penalty. Tackle behind the line and scrimmage by King. Flag on the play. That would be the third sack of the ballgame game stands. And it is a holding call. No, we'll undoubtedly decline that one. At holding against the offense, it's declined to be third down. All-American, 55, Ben Tamburillo. You do a lot more as a center than just block right in the middle. He has to drop way outside, but King will get underneath him on that on that play. He was beat on that play, but he had to go way outside to pick up that blitzing outside backer. Lost six, third, and 16 for Berger. 
So Mississippi State has made some big plays, but they have given up some big plays on defense. And it's complete. No, it's incomplete. Lawyer Tillman thought he had the reception. The officials overruled it. Well, this is the new dimension Auburn has with this passing attack. Third and long, 15 yards. They're going to go right over the, the middle to Tillman. Lawyer Tillman, great name. Good receiver. That's a catch to me. Should have been a catch and a fumble. Yep. Shulman is in the punt on fourth and long. And Smith driven all the way back to his 13-yard line, and he's in trouble. Dumped at the 11. Great kick coverage by Auburn. A 47-yard punt and minus two on the return. Timeout, it's still Auburn by 14. Here at Starkville, Mississippi, their club is down, however, 14-0 first quarter. World Series update for you. Boston has scored in the first, leading the Mets 1-0. They could take it all tonight. Keep you up to date on that one, too. Smith will send to John Moore in motion and wants to throw to Moore. Just to the 14-yard line. Johnson drove him out of bounds. Tim Brando has some information on the sideline. Tim? Rocky Felker had a few words with Don Smith and his offensive team on the last series, and he's noticed the same thing you've noticed, Pat. That is that Auburn is uh, keying on both Smith and the tailback. With that in mind, all Smith needs to do is settle himself down. Those passes to Hadley are there. They've been just a bit overthrown. That's a sign that perhaps Don is a little tight at this point. Remember, this is the biggest game that's been played here in a long, long time. Gain of only two on the last play, and Smith gets back to throw again. Deep sideline this time, complete to Lewis Clark. Clark to the 35, 36, and Panthers, an old axiom in football. You can take some things away, but not everything. That's right. Smith's pass complete to Clark. Well, Lewis Clark has been a good target for Don Smith for a couple of years now. He'll drop back. He'll have plenty of time on this throw. And I think Tim Beebe's right. He's got to start throwing the ball. He can't rely just on running. He can throw this ball. He's shown it this year. Perfect strike right at the sideline. Again, they're dropping back in that zone. You can attack them with those type of patterns. Clark averaging over 21 yards a catch on his career. Smith scrambling. Now he throws an overthrow. Trying to hit Clark again at midfield. Coverage by Johnson and Powell. And that's when he is really dangerous when he starts scrambling. Well, Don Smith is so athletic. But I think uh, what you alluded to earlier as far as or Timmy did about him being tight, I think you go to your strengths when you're nervous or you're in a tough game. And Don Smith's been known as a runner throughout his career. I think they've got to go back and they've got to establish his passing game. So far, he's five out of 11 for 47 yards. He's carried the ball four times for six as they have really keyed on him. Second and 10, 10-18 10 to go, first half. Peters and Taylor, the running back, split behind Smith. Peters on the draw. Sidestep one tackler, gets to the 41-42 yard line. Number 96, Benji Roll in the nose guard, and Kurt Crane, 39, make the tackle for the Tigers. Rocky Felker uh, told me a couple times yesterday that the important key of this game would be Rodney Peters to have a big game. Right now, they've been able to stop him. That's the first time he's actually been able to run north-south, I think. They've been getting him in the backfield. They have not established that outside running game with their uh, tailbacks, and that's hurting him right now. Last week, he had an excellent game, 124 yards against Tulane, but Auburn and defense, uh, Auburn and Tulane's defense are a little different. Smith on the roll, wants to keep it. Now he throws, he got a man wide open and he fell down. Wide open was Lewis Clark. The pass was underthrown and he simply slipped and fell. What a tough break. Well, it's an example of Smith's ability to run. I think the cornerback, Lewis coverage here, he comes up because he's scared of the run. You can see him right there at number three. And then he'll throw deep. He's wide open, Clark. So frustrating. Oh. He slipped. You know, it rained a lot yesterday, and that turf's a little wet. He fell down. That could have been a big play. But again, it was because of Don Smith's running ability that the coverage was blown. And the happiest man on the field was Shan Morris. The safety was trying to get over there. Marks the punt. Sperlin is deep. Another pretty kick. Last time he got off a beauty like this, Sperlin really ran it back a long way. Trying to get outside. He won't this time. Buried at the 20-yard line. Maybe shy of it, a 42-yard kick and a four-yard return. Now, 
So Auburn will take over at its own 20-yard line. And ESPN's live presentation of Thursday night college football will continue October 30th when Fresno State hosts Fullerton State. Airtime is 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Pacific. And, of course, Fresno State has the Heisman Trophy candidate, Kevin Sweeney, just a great college quarterback. Of course, I think the Heisman has already been decided. Forward on the sweep. Got about three yards on it. Fullwood now 10 carries, 131 yards, an average of 13-1, not bad. I think you uh, meant that uh, Vinny Testaverde is going to take the Heisman Trophy. And yeah. Looking down at Auburn today, I really think that we've seen a lot of teams this year. They are the most explosive offense. Miami and they are the most explosive offense as I've seen. In their case, they use Fullwood like they use Testaverde for the big play. They really do. A lot of weapons, and they are very, very strong on defense. As a matter of fact, they may be stronger on defense than they are on offense. Second and six. Guns it over the middle, complete to his tight end to the 30. That's Walter Reeves who makes his 10th catch of the season and should have a first down. One thing Pat Sullivan did when he worked with uh, Berger this year, the quarterback, is he changed his throwing style. Much more over, over shoulder. He was going sidearm. And you can see there, it's a crisp pass to the tight end. Got there fast, good quick release, and right in the stomach. Sometimes those little physical things can make a big difference. Pat Dye has his club up 14-0. Middle of the second quarter. Big game, both of these teams undefeated in the Southeast Conference. And that'll have to change after tonight. Fullwood gets near the 35-yard line. One key to a great offense is that center, the guy that snaps the ball. If he can control the middle of the line, you can go inside, you can go outside, and there's Tamborello again, 55. Takes the backer right out of the play. And he doesn't stop, he drives people back. Tim Jesse, number 25, will replace Fullwood at tailback on a second and six. And they'll give it to A.G. And A.G. crosses the 35 to about the 37. Larry Burnett has a scoreboard update state for us from Bristol. Larry? All right, North Carolina going against LSU at Baton Rouge. LSU leading 3-0. Here's Mickey Guidry back to pass. 22 yards to Rosie McGee. LSU gets in for the score. 10-0 they are leading now. Close to half in Baton Rouge. Seven minutes and 28 seconds to go in the half here. Auburn facing a third and three. And the crowd exhorting Mississippi State to hold. Fullwood back in there and he breaks it. Fullwood to the 47-yard line. Asa Bennett, the strong side safety. The red shirt freshman had to make the tackle. He's just so dangerous every time he touches it. Well, they've, they've used him up the middle a couple times after he broke the one wide, and now they'll go outside again with him. And A.G. is an excellent blocker. He picks defense back right out of the play. And one reason that Auburn has a lot of long runs, we saw with Tam Riddle, they finish their blocks, and their wide receivers are downfield throwing blocks. And that's why they can break the long runs. First and 10, and a whistle will stop play. It's interesting, Pat, when they go to that wishbone formation on short yardage, they don't seem to use it like a wishbone. They use it more like the old T formation, the full house backfield with that toss instead of faking the option. Well, it's so tough on the defense to put so much pressure on you because they, they go with an imbalanced line. They put an extra tackle over there. They have two tight ends. They have a great blocker in AG and, of course, Fullwood in the backfield. Ball foul, illegal procedure against the offense. Still have first and 15. If the, defense, call. if the defense adjusts to their uh, imbalanced line, then they'll just go back the other way wide with the pitch. So it is very tough. Very good scheme. Excellent uh, coaching. I think Pat Sullivan has really helped Pat Dye's staff and really come in and done a good job. Uh, just having the name around has got to help, if nothing else. First and 15, Berger to throw. Wants to swing it in the flat, has his man covered. A.G. was covered like a blanket out there. Great play by Dwayne King, number 49, the linebacker, who saw that one coming, and a good smart play by Berger, who just threw it into the bench. Well, that's a nice defensive adjustment. Earlier, they ran that same play and uh, to the short side of the field. They picked up about 30 yards, Daisy. That time, they defensed it well. So it's going to be second and 15. And Tim Jesse, number 25, is in as a tailback. He had been set on the wing, and now he's behind Daisy. Jesse gets it on the delay. Stacked up shy of the 50-yard line. Gary Frank, number 54, was in there. Frank is a low to 290. He's an offensive tackle. In high school, he had a 700-pound leg squat and a 710-pound dead lift. 
He could have thrown you about uh, 30 yards. Could have thrown you for a touchdown. He could have looked at me five times. Auburn, three out of six on third down conversions. It's third and ten. What a great catch at the 19-yard line by Lawyer Tillman. Took it on his fingertips. Well, I talked to Pat Dye yesterday, and he believes that they can go deep. Kirby Jackson's the guy they want to beat, number seven. They got Tillman on him man-to-man. -man. It's a perfect throw. They think that uh, Jackson was lucky a few times earlier. Balls were dropped or there were penalties. That's great when you make a call. And this is the key to any deep pass. They blitz, and they pick it up. The backs do their job, the line does their job, and they throw deep. Jackson never turned around. He never saw the ball, so it's... First and 10 from the Mississippi State 19. Flag is down as Jesse has it on the pitch. Horse makes the tackle as he gets to the 16. We'll check the penalty for you. And it looks like it's a motion penalty against Auburn. You know, coaches spend half their lives probably drawing X's and O's, fantasizing about plays, matchups they want to get in a game. It's got to be gratifying when you get one just like that, where you beat Jackson with Tillman just as you'd planned. Perfect throw by the quarterback, Jeff Berger. We're just told that on that uh, long pass play to Tillman, Auburn had 10 people on offense. <laughs> that's well, a, I guess when they go in that's system. the unimbalanced line. That's right. Illegal motion on offense, still first down. That'll cost them five. I think what happened, a receiver came off to talk to Pat Dye, and it was too late to send it back in the ballgame, so he just kept him out and ran the play. That's when you know you're strong. You only need uh, 10 players on offense. In Mississippi State, it looked like they double teamed the 11th guy, the 11 guy, he was wide open. 233 yards in total offense in the first half for Auburn. They have an awesome offense. Bolton, the man in motion. Jesse, end around to Bolton. 10 to the 9-yard line. Jackson knocked him out of bounds. Now they're throwing the entire playbook at the Bulldogs. Just another weapon in the arsenal. They'll pitch the ball back to the tailback. They've been hurting them all night, and they'll go back and hand it to Scott Bolton, who was running back when he came to Auburn at first. Not a bad guy to hand off to on a reverse, and they have it set up so well. Mississippi State with that eight-man front. They over pursued. He breaks the tackle there. Easy first down. That's a problem when you have an east-west team like Mississippi State. They pursue so much. Overrunning. Linebacker overruns the play, and it's back the other way. And that's what happens to uh, defenses that have to uh, play spread out against a team like Auburn. You get burnt backside. Bolton's single touchdown of the year came on that same play against Vanderbilt earlier in the season. It is second and one. Fullwood back in. Look out. Oh, my goodness. Touchdown. Holy cow! It's like slow motion. They're pulling him, and he just won't go down. He may only be 209 pounds, but that was a Bo Jackson-like play. Three guys had him at the two-yard line, and they couldn't hold him out of the end zone. So Knapp will come on to try to make it 21 nothing, and the homecoming crowd has just been stunned here in Starkville. And Knapp rips it through. 34 in a row this year. And there's the touchdown again. They'll just toss it back to Fullwood, and he does the rest. They do a nice job cutting off the corner. They give him some room, and then it's just his own ability. They'll pick the hole. Now, anybody else has got to go down here. The guy, they have five guys coming at him. Somehow, it keeps his balance and splits him for the touchdown. Unbelievable run. Now, this is you can pretend you're the linebacker here. What would you do against Fullwood? Mississippi State has not been able to stop him. Even when they hit him with four or five people, he finds that end zone. He is legitimate. We have a timeout with 5.31 to go in the half. 21 nothing Tigers. Brent Fullwood at Auburn has never averaged under 5.4 yards a carry. It looks like he's, he may be going to the dressing room right now. He's only gained 155 yards in the first half. You wonder what he'd do if they'd give him the ball 20 or uh, 20 times or 30 times a game. You know, they only give it to him nine or 10 times a game most of the time. Had a great first half, already over uh, 800 yards for the season, a virtual cinch for 1,000. Robinson at the goal line. Mississippi State needs a big play, and they won't get it here. Get it back to the 21 for a 21-yard return. Tim Brando has something for us from the sideline. Tim? Mike and Pat, you see Brent Fullwood leaving the field right now where they will administer an IV at halftime. He was ill. He had a virus earlier in the week. 
did not practice First on Tuesday, and considering the way he has played tonight, he has become a bit exhausted, and I think we can all understand why. It's amazing to think that the kid was weak and has 155 yards in the first half. They'll throw it out to Peters in the flat. Peters gets to the 25, doing out of bounds. He'll come back in the second half as an Ivy Leaguer. We'll pass on that one. Uh, Kurt Crane made the tackle. We've got some score updates for you. Don't start with a punt already. It's early. And there's an update. Uh, the Red Sox trying to wrap it up, leading the top of the second over the Mets. Arkansas-Houston tied up second quarter, Southwest Conference. Tennessee and Georgia Tech, as they start the third quarter, are tied. Second and six here for Mississippi State. Smith back to throw. Out in the flat to Hadley. Hadley's got the first down, out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Good decision. Andre Bruce right on his back. Here's the Auburn scoring drive and another impressive one. 11 plays, 80 yards, took almost four minutes, and Fullwood with a great run capped it off from nine yards out. The third down and four. Mississippi State's trying to beat Auburn on the outside. They're trying to beat him east-west. I really think they need to attack him north-south more. It's the only effect uh, play they've had over a couple of passes, short passes outside. Peters in motion. Robinson the alone back, and they give it to him on the shuffle pass. Get it, get it. Stays inbound, stays on his feet at the 40. 45, 48 yard line. Calvin Robinson, a 6'1", 200 pound senior, puts some life back in the offense. Well, you don't draw this one up on the board. This play might have been designed, but it was all individual play by Calvin Robinson. Just a little shuffle pass right underneath. Now, this is going to be stopped for no gain. There's no way he's going to get outside here. Somehow, it keeps his balance. He doesn't go out of bounds. He's hit three or four times. That's just great individual effort. That's a terrific effort by the starting fullback, who had only gained 114 yards so far this year on the ground. Smith takes it this time out to Lewis Clark. Was Clark down? Whistles are blowing. You can't get down to that knee in college, and he did. Crowd doesn't like it, but that looks like an excellent call. Well, he could have uh, he could have kept running in professional football, but you can't put your knee. This is just a bad habit. You didn't need to put that knee on the ground on this play. It's a tough oh, throw, yeah. but he's down right there. Nice play yep. by the officials. Good call, and it cost him four. And it looked like they had the play set up pretty well, too. Rocky Felker thought so. It's going to be tough to beat this Auburn defense with those type of plays. So you're going to have to get underneath them over the middle. Don Smith completing a good percentage of his passes, but not getting a lot of yards out of it. More in motion. Smith pressured now. And Andre Bruce gets the sack. 6'6", 228, his third sack of the season, and Don Smith is hanging on to his left knee. He had a foot injury a week ago, and he's getting up a little slow this time. There's his mother, and she uh, certainly has to be concerned about her son, but Don is up limping a little bit on that leg. And they came after him, Pat. Well, they're very tough up front. That's the thing, and they have so much speed outside. Andre Bruce was a basketball star in high school. He really wasn't recruited as a football player, except by Auburn. And he just ran, he just ran him right down, and you know how fast Don Smith is. That's the thing about Pat Dye. He's been able to pick up some people that other people really didn't recruit heavily and turn them into All-Americans. And it may have been the helmet. Let's take a look at this angle. But Bruce just throws it down. Heck of a job. Tracy Rocker is 74 coming in. There it was. Hit him right on the inside. That's a bruise. We'll see how Don Smith is in a moment. 3.36 to go. First half. Experience an incredible advance in Gillette. Don Smith at the Mississippi State sideline. And with him out with a bruised left knee, Mike Davis, the redshirt freshman quarterback, 6'2", 180 pounds, comes in. And what a way to come in on third and 24 against one of the toughest defenses in the country. The Auburn sideline was yelling, watch out for the draw. And there they got the delay to Moore. And Moore goes absolutely nowhere. Number 39, Kurt Crane right there to fill the hole. 
and Mississippi State will have to kick it away. And there is Smith. Just limping a little bit. I'd expect to see him back in after he was hurt last week. They asked him if he'd play against Auburn. He said it'd take two broken arms and two broken legs. He'll be there. James Joseph will go deep to receive the punt of Tommy Parks. There's Joseph. Average 13 yards, but only had two returns this year. Another high floating spiral. Joseph in the 25. Still on his feet. And these Auburn players are tough to bring down, even in punt return situations. Larry and Vino will be coming up at halftime to scores and highlights of all the key games tonight, plus a special feature on the marketing of a Heisman Trophy candidate. We'll also have live interviews with Heisman frontrunners Vinny Testaverde and Paul Palmer. First down, Auburn. That was a 42-yard punt. Got two minutes and 46 seconds to go in the first half, and Auburn would like nothing better than to put something else on the scoreboard. First down, Auburn. Jesse is in at tailback as they are tending to forward, and this is A.G. A.G. really took a pop from Brian Hudson, the strong side safety number 18. It's a very young Mississippi State defense, and although they've given up 21 points in the first half, uh, they have done an excellent job this year under Rocky Falcon. Well, they made the adjustment after that Tennessee. They were really getting hurt defensively. They changed the 4-4, and they've been able to stop people. The problem is when you're playing an offense like Auburn, if you don't have the players, strategy won't do it. And I think they're just overpowering them. They have just have too many weapons. I'm told we will have an interview with Paul Palmer at halftime and not Vinny Testaverde. There's a fumble by Jesse. Picked it up. And he's buried back at the 20-yard line. Jesse fumbled the toss, and Dwayne King chased him down back there. Well, they're trying to uh, pitch right. They're going to go. But the problem with this play is they get penetration from the defense. Number seven, Kevin Kirby Jackson's going to come in right now, put pressure on him right there. He saw him. He took his eye off the ball. Now it's up to King to just run him down. That play was destroyed by penetration by uh, Jackson. Trying to make up maybe for that pass he got burned on earlier. Pat, that's the second time tonight they've had a problem with Jesse on the toss. The first time the ball went right by him. I really think he's looking up to uh, find where he's going to run instead of looking for the ball. Third and 19. Passing down for Berger. Instead, they'll keep it on the ground. Won't get it uh, very far out to the 25-yard line as Vincent Harris, third string fullback, takes it out to the 25. Tim Brando has an update for us down on the field. Tim? All right, Mike. Don Smith has uh, strained his left knee. It's the same leg that he hurt against Tulane, but it was an ankle problem against the Green Wave a week ago. It is his knee now, but he does plan to come in on the next series, though I can tell you, backup Mike Davis has already warmed up his right arm, so they're very concerned about Smith. He means a lot to this team, and they'll need him beyond this Auburn game, no doubt. Boy, that's for sure, and they, uh, they are running into the worst part of their, their schedule. They've got Alabama, LSU, and Mississippi after this. Nice way to finish, huh? Well, Rocky Felker said, really, Don Smith's greatest quality is his toughness, his competitiveness, and I'm sure he'll come back into play. And that's a problem with you. When you have an ankle injury, sometimes you'll hurt your knee trying to protect her. You get hit like that in an odd place with a helmet right on the inside. Schulman to punt. They're showing a 10-man front. Here they come, but they didn't get there. And Milton Smith signals fair catch at the 38-yard line. 36-yard kick, no return, and Mississippi State looked like they had the block on that time. But good protection by the Auburn punt blockers, and Don Smith will check back into the ball game and gets a nice cheer from the sellout plus throng. It's awfully difficult to be a quarterback in this situation. You know, he's not feeling well physically anyway. As far as the strategy goes, I think Auburn uh, right now is really stopping this offense with superior personnel and some nice strategy. Smith has a minute 15 before the half. And throws poorly, intended for Lewis Clark, and now a flag is down, maybe a late hit. It was thrown near where the line of scrimmage was. Tracy Rocker was the man who was putting on the pressure. Smith stood in there. And it's an ineligible man downfield against Mississippi State. Let's see what uh, Auburn will choose to do. Did not throw that ball very well, Pat. No, it's a tough throw. He was, he's really not on balance when he makes this throw. And Don Smith will drop back, and I bet you he, he wishes this was a late hit by Rocker because he really gets hit after he delivers this ball. No, that That's, wasn't much. Yeah, yeah you would have just stood up right. No problem. No, I'd have fallen down. I'd have fallen down before he got there. Someone uh, Rocker size hit you. They all hurt. 
First and 15, they'll take the penalty. Smith scrambling out of the pocket. Look out from behind. Got away from Bruce. Throws for Lewis Clark, and it's incomplete. Chip Powell back there on coverage, and Smith just threw it as far as he could that time. And Clark couldn't jump high enough to make the catch. And you can see the frustration on uh, head coach Rocky Felker as there is another flag down. And the preliminary indication, it is another ineligible man downfield. Mississippi State is going the wrong way. Maybe they figure that's the only way they can get people open if they put an extra guy out there. Had an ineligible receiver downfield. Still first down. Well, it's very frustrating for a quarterback. Uh, you know, Smith has field. such ability to scramble. And usually when you scramble and like that, you'll have a receiver open deep. But Auburn plays a very disciplined secondary. They keep their free safety very deep, and they're just not going to give up those kind of plays. They almost had one earlier, but that was misplayed by the corner. You're not going to burn them deep very often. Mississippi State started with excellent field position on this drive. But right now, they're back to their own 28-yard line. And first and 20. Smith deep over the middle. He's got a man out there, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Chip Powell. Powell playing free safety, cut across, and made the catch back to the 40, 35-yard line. Powell was just playing center field, and they were throwing for Jerry Myers, and there is a flag down after the play, a 34-yard return. Well, Don Smith is going to roll right on this. We just mentioned you're just not going to be able to throw the ball deep, particularly down the middle. They have a free safety waiting back there for every play. They're just not going to give it up. And actually, they had two people on this play. Either one could have picked it off. There's no way this ball is going to get in there. And another safety back deep also. You just can't get frustrated and make those type of plays. Now Auburn has the ball inside the 30-yard line, going in to score. All the way down almost to the 20. Personal it's a foul. nice catch. After you make an interception, the best thing is when you get a run. And Smith, see, he's hoping right there. You just can't throw passes and pray. And Chip Powell on the sideline. Who Pat Dye says just playing over his head. He walked on. They never expected him to play. And he's had a couple interceptions already this season. He's all over the field. So with 44 seconds to go, Auburn's got a chance to add some more points. Give up to James Joseph into the ball game for the first time out of Phoenix City, averaging five and a half yards a carry. And number 10 gets down to the 15 yard line where they'll stop the clock with a timeout and 35 seconds to go. In case you missed some of the earlier scores, Penn State in the showdown with Alabama, they won and they won big. And we will have the Nittany Lions, who may be ranked second, uh, at least third next week. They'll travel to Morgantown, West Virginia, where they have enjoyed incredible success. Our coverage begins at 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 Pacific. Chris Berman, Larry Burnett, and Beano Cook host the Mercury College football scoreboard show. West Virginia lost to Boston College today. The first time that Jack Picknell has ever been able to beat West Virginia. Even with Doug Flutie and all those great teams, they couldn't beat the Mountaineers. But Penn State has not had that trouble. Jesse is back in the ballgame at tailback. And look at the rushing yards for Auburn. 186 first half. And that great defense has held Mississippi State's multiple offense to only 18 yards on the ground. You do that, you've done a job. I just think they're shell-shocked right now. I think uh, Don Smith's trying to do a little bit too much. Got to get back in the game and get a drive. Right now, they've got to stop the offensive line. Right they sure do. Second and four. Showing blitz. And here they come after Berger. Good protection. Great catch by Lawyer Tillman at the one. That is the second big catch that Lawyer Tillman has made in this game. And there is a flag down at the eight-yard line. And it's defensive holding. Well, they're actually holding Tillman. We're going to be able to see that on the ISO, too, because we have him. They're blitzing on this play, so it's going to be man-to-man -man coverage. Auburn came in, came in saying they're going to throw a corner route against this blitz, and he's all over him, just grabbing him. That's a good call. Plummer cannot take him man-to-man. -man. Tillman's showing he can take both those corners if he's given the opportunity. They came in, they said if they're going to blitz, we're going to take one receiver and send him to the post and the other one to the corner. We have time. We know we can complete those passes, and they just did. Well, Tillman, 6'4", 218. Plummer, 6'1", 185. A physical mismatch. 
Well, Tillman's an unusual combination. He's very strong and very fast. And when you have someone 6'4", you want to go up top to him. They've shown it twice against each of the cornerbacks. You know, one of the key to Mississippi's defense is, really, their defense is th those corners. That's why they can play the eight men up front. They play a lot of blitzes. But I don't think anybody's going to guard a player like Tillman one-on-one. -on -one. A uh, lawyer is a family name. He really doesn't know where he got it. Good profession. It's one of the great names. Yeah, that's right. One of his, his sister's a nurse. <laughs> so they're the working on it. First and goal, two tight ends, full house backfield. And it's fullback Reggie Ware. Another touchdown, Auburn. That's the warehouse because he's storing up touchdowns <laughs> every game. Do it again with this uh, big line in front of him. They're just going to hand the ball, hand the ball to the fullback. Reggie Ware shown he can do it. I think this is eight, eight or nine this year now, right over the top. There's just no way to stop that play when you're mismatched physically. Chris Knapp may be getting leg weary. He's on to try another one. Kicks it through, and with 24 seconds left, it's 28 nothing Mississippi State trailing Auburn. And here was what you were talking about: the frustration of Mississippi State's offense. They were down 21 nothing, which is bad enough, but then with time running out in the half, deep in their own territory, they made a mistake that allowed Auburn to get on the board again. Well, I really think that if this is a case of uh, Auburn just coming in here saying, we're not gonna let one of the, the little kid on the block come in and knock us off. You know, they, they were heavily favored, they came in and they're showing why. Ware has scored twice on runs of one yard, Fullwood 88 and again, nine have, yard run. They have two tackles right there on the left-hand side and a tight end, they're just too big and too strong. They can't stop them. <laughs> And it has been a long first half for Rocky Felker. It's easier to walk away. This be the huff, uh, toughest halftime speech he's had to give as a coach, that's for sure. That's right. Michael Robinson is deep to receive the kick of Chris Knapp, number eight. There's Robinson. <laughs> Twenty-four seconds left, and you can almost hear a pin drop here at homecoming. They joined us like this is the biggest crowd they've ever had. They had never had a sellout here, and they'll go with a low split kick. Robinson from the ten. Got some room up the left hand side. He gets up to the forty-five yard line. Excellent return, thirty-five yards for Robinson. But we only have fifteen seconds left in the first half. Well, if this had happened uh, when the score was a little closer, this crowd would have gone crazy. Calvin Robinson picks up just a squib kick. They're trying to stop a big return with a little kick like that, but he picks it up clean, finds a seam, and he's not going to give up. Watch him keep running. He just keeps right on dragging those guys. Richard Manry on Auburn special teams made the stop. The time running out Smith. Probably going to have to go deep. Instead, he dumps it over the middle, and it's dropped by Clark. Clark Coach wanted Patrick. to run with that ball so, but yeah. Yes. <laughs> All I have to do is call it and it goes the other way, right? I keep telling you they shouldn't go deep. But you're right, in this instance, they really should have. Well, thank you. But they didn't, and Clark dropped it anyhow, which makes it a moot point with 10 seconds left in the first half. Now they'll be playing their O zone. They're going to be so deep. No way you're going to go long. Smith under pressure. Goes deep sideline, just threw that one away over Clark's head with four seconds left. Brian Smith, the man who was putting on the pressure. Oh, he'll know he's, he's been in a game. The thing is that Don Smith is so versatile. He has so much ability. He's back there scrambling around, but Auburn's putting so much pressure on him with the front five guys, and their secondary is so good. Their corners are good. They play that nice zone, and they're taking away the deep stuff, and he just, he just can't find anybody open. He's buying time, but it's just not doing him any good. Smith has had a tough first half, 9 out of 19, an interception 73 yards. He's only gained 5 yards on the ground. Little shuffle pass to Taylor. He'll need to break it. His time has expired in the half. He doesn't. Auburn knocks him down at the Tiger 42. That is the end of the first half here in Starkville, Mississippi. And the Auburn Tigers, 7th ranked and undefeated, have shown us what they're made of, taking a 28-0 lead over Mississippi State at halftime. Let's go back to Bristol and Larry Burnett. All right, Mike, Auburn looking awfully tough as they go against a tough Mississippi State team with their up big at halftime. Coming up on the MetLife Halftime Report, being on now to kicking around some of the top 20 scores, let you know about the big upset in college football. Mississippi State at halftime. Now, now Auburn, I'm
obviously is in a great position for the polls next week we may be seeing next week's number two team I'll take a little exception with Vino Cook Penn State went into Tuscaloosa at their place and won and we'll see them next week against the Mountaineers of West Virginia you're looking at Joe Paterno's record two years ago as his Penn State Nittany Lions faced West Virginia but it was not to be for Paterno and his Penn State team as West Virginia with that interception preserved a victory a victory that they would savor in Morgantown they had never before beaten Joe Paterno until that night next week they hope for a reenactment as West Virginia tries to pull the upset against Penn State 730 Eastern Time right here on ESPN but we still have 30 minutes left here in Scott Field, and we're ready for the kickoff, and Mike Patrick and Pat McAnally have it for you. Thanks very much, Tim, and Auburn will kick it off. Chris Knapp to start the second half. Michael Robinson deep to receive, and Mississippi State needs a big play to get back in this ballgame. Robinson can do it. He's standing at the three. Got a seam. Territory knocked out of bounds by Kevin Porter at the 49. And that's exactly what they needed. Well, he's made a couple big returns for them already tonight. That's the best thing they've done, a kickoff returns. Unfortunately, they've had too many. That's why they're losing. This is what you need to start the second half. Get back in this game. He just finds a seam. He tries to tiptoe up the sidelines. He almost goes all the way on this. But he'll be knocked out of bounds. Or he would have gone. He had another blocker. Smith brings him out in the second half. They'll give it to the fullback going straight up the middle. Calvin Robinson, Kirk Crane makes the tackle. Take a look at the halftime stats, and it will tell you exactly what the scoreboard has shown us. A 28-0 lead because Auburn is totally dominated. Well, they have the 187 yards they're rushing, which we expected. Maybe not that many, but they're strong. That passing game, they've had some big plays to Tillman when they blitz. They've been able to burn Mississippi State, and then they go with the ball, and they run it up the gut or around have, the end. They have held the Bulldogs to 18 yards rushing in this ballgame. Smith dumps it off. This is Bush. Bush has the first down. Here's what happened to Mississippi State in the first half, and you are going to see a lot of punts after not very many long drives. The only two times that they got into Auburn territory, once they were pushed back, the last time they had it, they got to the Auburn 42, and halftime killed the drive. And that means they got no penetration, no points. And that means shutout at halftime. Sure does. Third and five. And Smith is buried, and it's Brian Smith coming from the outside linebacker spot and really dropped him. And they'll have to punt it away. Auburn's Smith got everything, don't they? Uh, well, they had this play well diagnosed, well defense. Actually, John Smith did the right thing in pulling this down. He's going to get hit by another Smith, not his brother. But that was right. If he had thrown that, that would have been intercepted. It could have been another touchdown for Auburn. Sometimes it's tougher to eat it, but it's the right thing to do. Parks is in the punt. That's James Joseph, number 10, standing at his own 10-yard line. A punt from Mississippi State, 23 Parks. Deep receiving position. Joseph will take it at his five. Got room up the middle. Takes a big hit and gets to the 18. 44-yard punt, 12-yard return, and Auburn has found a great system on their possession. <laughs> they score every other time. All you're going to see, punt, touchdown, punt, touchdown, punt, touchdown. And they scored on their last possession in the first half, so you have the idea that uh, maybe they'll have to punt this time. Yeah, it, their favorite color's got to be yellow right now. And I'll tell you, they rest their punter. That's the smart way to do it. They score every other series. Fullwood at tailback. He's the only man in the backfield. And they give it to A.G. on the toss. Fullwood out there blocking for him. And A.G. has a seat. 45-47 yard line before they can bring him down. Now, that time they took Fullwood, who was the tailback, put him out on a wing and ran the toss to A.G. They have shown a brilliantly diversified offense. Well, I'm very impressed with their play calling and the design of the plays. They're trying to stop Fullwood outside, so they pitch it short, which is unusual to A.G. Really, he's a better running back than people realize. He's faster, he's a very good blocker. I think he's going to be an excellent pro. But that play, again, it was designed. That's a couple times tonight. It's just been absolutely the design of the play that made him very go big. First and 10, Auburn. They have it at their own 47-yard line. Fullwood. 
Spins off a tackle. And gets to the Auburn 45-yard line. Asa Bennett, number 27, the man on the bottom of the pile. Our attendance, the biggest ever here in Starkville, 42,700. Sometimes this, the star of your team isn't always running back. We've shown Tamborello a couple times. They're able to run left because he just absolutely holds off the defensive tackle. And Fullwood's able to cut off it for another big game. Vincent Jones, 57, got a good block in there, too. The ball at the 44-yard line. They just seem to have talent everywhere on the offensive line, the backfield, the, and the secondary, and defensive line. They've got enough great players everywhere. They're loaded. Second and two. They'll give it to A.G. First down and more. A.G. shakes another tackle. 30, 25, 23-yard line. Scott Bolton, the split end, threw him a great block downfield. And A.G. is trying to catch up the forward. And he's limping right now, though. Well, it's frustrating. You know, he's had Bo Jackson and now Fullwood. He doesn't get the ball that often. When he does get it, he, he makes the most of it, though. He's, again, he's a four-year starter, and he's a tough runner. You know, you block play after play. It's nice when you get a run every once in a while. You can see they twisted the right leg as he went down that time, and A.G. was 73 yards on only eight carries will come out of the ball game. And they'll give it to Reggie Ware. When he doesn't seem to drop off in interchangeable backs. Well, when your fullback's averaging nine yards a carry and your tailback's over 11 for a game, you know you're moving the ball. They're working on A.G. on the side now. Part of that record crowd, 42,700 here at Scott Field. And it's not been a pleasant homecoming. Of course, those were the uh, Auburn fans, some 8,000 of them made the trip. There's A.G. on the side. His dad was a great center fielder. Second and five, Auburn. Gainus, the man in motion. The pitch to Fullwood, got blockers in front. Spun off a tackle. Brent Fullwood, first down to the Mississippi State six-yard line. Oh, he took a big hit on that. He spun off it again, though. Well, they just keep coming at you, and Brent Fullwood is superb. There's no other uh, adjective I can use. They're going to toss the ball to him, and it's all him again. They get the corner for him, the rest, he's going to take a big hit from Hudson. I mean, that's a big hit. He's a real good tackler, but he'll spin right off. That's what he does so effectively. He spins, he keeps going forward, he keeps his balance, and he doesn't lose much speed. 15 carries, 173 yards. That's an 11.8 average. He got it again. That's the best rather who checks in. Not coming from the Full would need to break every once in a while. Now Joseph will check in at the tailback spot. And they're very high. Tailback in that system. They're very high on James Joseph. They think he's going to be the next star in this offense. Time, Only a freshman, 6'2", 200. Six. Out of Phoenix City. First and goal from the five. Make it second and goal now from the five. Scoreboard was incorrect. Fullwood trying to get outside. Touchdown. Power inside, speed outside. This is a complete football team, and Rocky Felker, all he can do is shock his head right now. Well, we said earlier, Brent Fullwood has great speed. Not only strong in breaking tackles here, he just he doesn't even have to break a tackle. Another nice block by the back gives him the corner. There's just no way of catching him. It's a five-yard touchdown run. That hurts his average. <laughs> That's right. Extra point is good by Chris Knapp, and it's 35-0 Auburn over Mississippi State. Seven seconds to go in the third quarter, and Auburn in the midst of a blowout, 35 to nothing over Mississippi State. It's really going to test the Bulldogs' courage right now to see whether they can come back or not, and at least make it respectable. Michael Robinson is deep to receive the kick of Chris Knapp. Knapp's done a fine job on kickoffs. This time he drives Robinson three yards deep to bring it out. And no room to run this time. Still on his feet. How did he get out of that? That was unbelievable. Last drive for Auburn. Another impressive 82-yard march. Took seven plays, and Fullwood ripped off a couple of beauties in that one. And A.G., they really went to their fullback. Again, they loosened sure him up did. outside. There is Fullwood. They're working on his uh, working on his equipment. 24 rushing touchdowns. They have given up but one. Robinson trying to get outside, gets to the 35-yard line. Kurt Crane, the transfer from Memphis State, in on the tackle again. 
whatever they gave this defense great leadership. Uh, whatever they gave Fullwood in that IV, you know, the sugar or whatever, it works. Because he came out fired up again. Get me a case. Robinson and Taylor alternating with fullback. It's second and seven. Taylor number 28 is in there now. They fake it to him. Smith, the quick pass to Hadley. 45, 48-yard line. Porter knocks him out of bounds. That's a play we had not seen yet, and it was very effective. I think one thing as a coach <laughs> obviously helps your strategies when you have great individual players. And I said a little earlier that the thing about Auburn is they have somebody great on every part of their defense and offense, whether it's O-line, D-line, or linebackers and secondary. They have one great player everywhere, then you have people around them to support it. It's awful, it's awful easy to be a strategist. Robinson back in at fullback. Peters is the tailback. Smith through the hands of Lewis Clark. Covered by Crane, or Crane was trying to put the pressure on Don Smith, rather. Well, let's watch that defensive line. And here he has a lot of time. He buys it. The problem is they'll put pressure on him late. They just don't have receivers open. He keeps having to take a yeah, linebacker crane like that. He hit him late. It was clean. But that's the thing. He really hasn't had many passes where he's had time to really pick out a receiver and stand and throw it and not get put on his back. Second and ten for Mississippi State. Hadley in motion. Second down and ten. Peters had some room to run up the middle that time. Gets to the 44-yard line. Only the third time in the ball game that Auburn or Mississippi State has been in Auburn territory. Let's go down to Tim Brando. Tim? My tummy, A.G., was injured on that last series. I know there are a bevy of running backs in the Auburn arsenal, but right now he does have an inside twist on the ankle. He could return. Considering the score, I'd be surprised if he did return, but he's in pretty good shape. That last run by Rodney Peters, thank you, Tim, was eight yards. That was the longest run tonight for the Mississippi State offense. Smith with a shovel pass to Robinson, and he didn't have a chance. Smith ought to go apologize. Stallworth made the tackle. You know, we were talking halftime, Pat, and you liken the Auburn offense and defense and what you've seen tonight to the strength of the Miami Hurricane. Well, they're the strongest team uh, I've seen all season besides Miami. I think they have the speed and the strength to play them. That'd be a heck of a game. Had a chance to visit with the uh, Mississippi State Athletic Director, Charlie Carr, at halftime. Great guy. He'll do a wonderful job down here. A class individual, and he will run a class program. But right now, Charlie's not very happy. His club is now 35 nothing. Timeout, 7.52 to go in the quarter. Back after this. There's something new on the road. It's built by Jeep. It's the kind of truck only Jeep could build. But it's also the kind of truck just about anybody can afford. The new short bed Jeep Comanche sport truck. 52 to go in the quarter. It is fourth and four for Mississippi State. And I like this call. They're going to go for it. They're down 35 to nothing. Uh, anything worse doesn't really make any difference. They'd like to get back in the ball game. Hunter's got to be tired also. Look for Don Smith to try to do it on his own. That's Peters in motion. Smith throws, he's got his man, then the fumble. He lost the first down on it. And it doesn't matter because Auburn recovers. Everything has gone wrong for Mississippi State. They gamble on fourth down, throw the pass complete, and then Shan Morris knocks it away. It's a nice ball, just a little roll left. He'll throw this bullet again, right? Perfect pass. Ball's caught easily. Now it's just bad luck here. He's going to get stripped. Actually missed the tackle. He'd still be running, but he got the ball stripped. That ends another drive right there. A lot of things have gone wrong for him tonight. Hadley trying to get more yardage out of that after he had the first down on the big gamble. So the uh, Mississippi State fans came to their feet and then had to sit right back down. Berger back to throw. Almost lost his balance. Deep sideline, and it's complete to Scott Bolton. A flag is down. Bolton ran a nice pattern that time, and so is Berger. Berger really took a blast. I've been very impressed with the way they're mixing up their plays. They have thrown the first down passes very effectively. That was nicer right there. Berger showed the strength of his arm. That's a tough throw. Preliminary signal is holding against Auburn, and they are talking to Cedric Course of Mississippi State so that it would wipe out the play.
Mississippi State has had some bad breaks in this ball game. Earlier in the first half, you'll remember, as we get the call from the official. The offense is holding. Be first down holding 20. Against Auburn. They had a man wide open, could have scored a touchdown. He slipped and fell. And they made a mistake at the end of the first half that allowed Auburn to get its fourth touchdown. We're not saying Mississippi State would be ahead, but it would be a much closer ball game. First and 20 now for Burton. And he's got Jesse in there at tailback. And Jesse gets the ball. Jesse to the 36. Got another scoreboard update for you. And here's Larry Burnett. LSU starting to pull away from North Carolina in the second half. Tom Hudson back to pass to Wendell Davis. 49 yards. LSU was leading 20 to nothing. And then the next time they got the football, same combination. Hudson to Davis, 12 yards this time to make it 27 to nothing. Davis with eight receptions and two touchdowns so far. 27 to nothing. That should have been a very close ball game, at least on paper, but that's why they let you play. Second and 15. Berger under pressure wants to throw the screen, and they got him. Anthony Butts was putting on the pressure. He missed, but Gary Frank was in there with him, and they'll exchange some words. And there's Butts. They haven't had much to cheer about. Well, this is one of those rare cases. Usually on a screen pass, you want to let the defensive lineman through. You want to put pressure on the quarterback, make him think they're making a good play. And then you dump the ball off. But in this case, they had the screen taken away from him, so then he got stuck by the guys who they had allowed to get in cleanly. Bad break for the quarterback. I don't know if Butts was trying to help him up being friendly, but he was picking him up by his jersey, and I don't think Berger liked it. He doesn't like third and 30, which is what he's looking at now. Jesse on the delay. We'll get back to the 30-yard line. He is not there by Jeremiah Sangster, number 40. And once again, uh, Auburn will punt it away. They remain true to their form, though. Touchdown, now a punt. That's right. And Schulman will come on to kick. This way you're praying for block punt. Anything to get you back in the game. Milton Smith is back to take it. And Schulman hits a beauty. Smith driven all the way back to the 18-yard line. Tries to get outside, got back to the 22. 51-yard kick, a four-yard return, and we have a flag down back at the Auburn 30-yard line. And it's a motion penalty against Auburn, so that will negate the 51-yard kick, and we'll see if Mississippi State tries to come after this one. Well, one thing you mentioned earlier is Auburn's played very well in special teams, other than a couple of uh, kickoff returns. Sure have. They punted very well, they've covered, and they broke a punt of their own. Very difficult to find a weakness in this ball club, and uh, I don't know who said before the season they were supposed to be rebuilding, but uh, they did a number on somebody. Huh. I really think it's the case. They came in here and they wanted to show that they were still one of the top, the top team in the SEC. I think they were extra inspired. Schulman, good numbers for him on the night. He's been averaging 44.2 on the season. So now it's fourth down and 26. About the best defensive stand that uh, Mississippi State had tonight. They're coming after him, but they didn't get there. And Schulman hits another mortar shot out of it. Smith. Get it back to the 27, maybe the 28-yard line. And after a 54-yard punt, we have 5-10 to go in the quarter. It's 35-0 Auburn. 35 nothing Auburn with 5-10 to go. Third quarter of play from Starkville, Mississippi. And the Bulldogs hang the ball at their own 22. Don Smith trying to get something started on offense. Wants to go deep. Throwing for Handley, and it's out of bounds. Good coverage by Chip Powell. He was just playing deep. Let's go to Tim Brando on the sideline. Tim? A couple of very special guests, Mike Patrick. And when you talk about Mississippi State tradition, it is baseball tradition. I've got Thunder and Lightning from their baseball past. Will Clark now the San Francisco Giants. Rafael Bamero now the Chicago Cubs. Will, it's got to be nice to know that your program, baseball, is the standard bearer for basketball and football. Now they're trying to build on your tradition a bit here. Well, the thing about it is, you know, we sort of set the precedence a few years ago, and uh, I think the whole athletic program has taken on a, a new meaning, and that's uh, due to Charlie Carr and also President Zacharias taking over the reins and just uh, look at the improvements they've made. i got to ask you about the series. It's 2-0 uh, now, Red Sox in the fifth. Uh, Clemens on the hill. 
and you played against him in the 83 regionals when you were at Mississippi State. He was at Texas. Is he better now, that much better now than he was back then? He's a more mature pitcher. He's a lot better. He uh, hits his spots a lot better. He also sets up hitters a lot better. So uh, Mets have their work cut out for him. Al, if you consider that Mississippi State baseball has come a long way and Duty Noble Field has been highly renovated, Rafael Palmero, you've got to be proud that you guys have helped build a brand new stadium for Ron Polk's club. Yeah, we, uh, you know, we've come a long way. I, when I first came up here, we had uh, just bleachers out there, and uh, you know, I'm glad that Coach Polk got his pro, uh, his stadium, and uh, you know, the, the fans are proud of it, and you know, the, the team that they're going to have this year is going to be pretty good, and uh, it's going to be exciting. The series is it surprising you a little bit that Boston may win this thing with Clemens on the hill? I mean, all things considered, and the Mets having one hundred eight game. Not really. Uh, you know, Boston has a great pitching staff. They have a great team, and uh, you know, anything can happen in a series like that. Anything has happened, and this one already an interception. And let's go back to Mike and Pat. Thank you, Tim Alvin Briggs, the nickelback. The junior comes in to make the interception after Don Smith had picked up some yardage on one pass to Hadley. Well, he made a smart pass and hook on the play before, but now again he tries to force the ball deep. Just not going to do it against the zone. He's not. He's just sitting back waiting for that deep streak pattern. Nice catch on that interception, though. I think they got to take their time, throw the hook pattern, throw the tight end over the uh, middle. You're just not going to go over top. Over yeah, the top Auburn has over. shown they're not going to give up anything deep right now. You've got Vincent Harris, number 21, James Joseph, number 10, as the running back. Harris. Cedric Course knocks him down at 23. And of course, Mississippi State, it, it's easy for us to say they should throw the short pattern. You can't get back in a 35 nothing ball game by throwing short patterns. But if they're playing so deep, you can't throw deep either. Well, you can't get back in the game by throwing interceptions. And yeah. it does your team no good confidence-wise. I think when you meet a team like this, right now they want to get some drives going, get some yardage, get some confidence back. You don't do that by throwing Hail Marys. There's Smith on the sideline. But this is a second and five situation for Jeff Berger on the Auburn offense. In motion is Alexander Wright, number 18. They'll toss it back to Joseph. Flag is down as Joseph gets to the 28-yard line. And it will be a hold against Auburn. Auburn probably isn't going to do anything tricky at this point. They're just going to try to work a lot of time off the clock, pick up as many first downs as they can. They're running an untricky, uh, just an easy pitch sweep around the end for 88 yards. Other right. plays aren't tricky. They just have the people to make them very uh, magic. They usually don't go 6 and 0 and uh, working on 7 and 0 by tricking people. White holding, still second down. Holding against Auburn. Well, let's show Auburn doing something wrong. 53 Cowards going to hold on to him. Got outside on Anthony Butts. I guess he's mad at Butts because uh, he was celebrating that sack earlier. He held him right there. One of the few errors Auburn has made. Cowart missed all of spring with a knee injury. He's majoring in architecture. Excellent grades. And a tough subject. Second and 15. As A.G. and Cole are back in. Berger wants to throw. Got a man wide open. Incomplete looking for Alexander right down the sideline. And the freshman couldn't catch up to him. Well, these are one way of being tricky. He's their secret weapon. Very fast. Auburn showing they're not satisfied with 35-0 lead. They want to build that passing uh, attack and build the confidence. Berg will drop back and just let this fly. And he is wide open. He got bumped a little bit at the line of scrimmage and misses stride. And that's why the ball is overthrown. Because he can really fly. I thought he had a big one right there. Trying to split the scene in that zone defense. Third and 15 for Auburn. Right goes in motion. And they'll give it to A.G. on the toss. They string it out. A.G. got away from one arm tackle, and Brian Hudson, the strong side safety, really didn't even try to get a shoulder into him, just put his hands on him, and he got away. Larry Burnett has a scoreboard update for us from Bristol. Larry? Last year, Tennessee's Carlos Rivez kicked a field goal with time running out to tie Georgia Tech. This time, he slips late in the fourth quarter. His 27-yarder goes off the post. Georgia Tech wins it tonight by the score of 14 to 13. Big win for Bill Curry, and Tennessee has had all kinds of problems this year. Smith trying to get outside, forget it. Great coverage by Auburn special teams. And we'll be back with 3.09 to go, third quarter. Nine to go, third quarter. Auburn roughing up Mississippi State 35 to nothing here in Starkville. Crowd of 42,700. 
not only the biggest crowd ever here, the biggest non-campus crowd in the state of Mississippi in the history of football. Only games in Jackson have ever outdrawn this one. Robert Gaunt, reserve defensive lineman, is in to make the tackle. A World Series update. The Mets finally got something off of Roger Clemens in this one. They're, they're in the bottom of the fifth. Red Sox continue to lead the Mets 2-1. to one. Second and six right now for Mississippi State. Pitch back goes to Peters. Fumble recovers at the 30. Rocky Felker. Yeah, you know, he was drafted the same year I was, 1975, by the Bengals. He told me yesterday I had a lot more gray hairs than him. He was smart not playing pro football, but I guarantee you he put a few on his head tonight. Tough, tough night. Probably he dropped out, too. But, you know, it's not his, you know, he's done a great job here. He's turned sure the picks. program around. you got to remember, they only won two games in the SEC over the last three years. Six and one coming into this one. Their best start since he was the quarterback here. Clark is in motion on third down. Smith in the flat to Peters. Peters is sandwiched. Big hit by Shan Morris. Kurt Crane also over there. Auburn just looks so tough on either side of the football. And they'll come up way short and have to punt it away. Parks comes in. James Joseph will go deep. Parks has punted well tonight, but you saw the net, and that's what really counts. It seems he's been out kicking his coverage. Or the coverage is not getting down there quick enough, one or the other. He seems to have pretty good hang time on him. He's kicked very well. They had one big return that hurt his average, but I think there's another nice one. It's a beauty. Joseph, no fair catch. And he'll pay for the no fair catch on that one. Stop shy at the 30. Let's go down to the sideline and Tim Brando. Just call me Romeo Brando. You know, a sideline guy, when the game gets out of hand, goes right to the homecoming court. I've got the queen at her court right now. Joanne Stripe. Joanne, the game is a little out of hand, but it, you, you're still queen. That's right. The game isn't very good, but it's still not going to take the joy out of this day. Mary Francis uh, tells me she's the junior mate. Uh, uh, you tell me there's a good band playing over at the, at the house, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Baby Blue's playing at the K house. All right. They're real good. Hey, you know what you like to go? What, to the homecoming, to the homecoming dance? Yes, me? yes. Oh, like just be a toe-tapping good time with Timmy B. Can I bring Mike and Pat along? Oh, sure, I would love to have him too. Oh, I'm, I don't know if they have as much rhythm as toe-tapping Timmy B, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're getting us in trouble again. Well, I'll have to defer. My wife, Leslie, would not be happy if I went to a dance. She's young, she's 26, but uh, she's going to feel old compared to those people. Yeah, I don't think, uh, I don't think Janet would be real happy with me over there either. So you're the one that might get in trouble, Timmy B. <laughs> Keep right on talking. Yeah, his family's back at the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Immediate threat. <laughs> My wife couldn't find me down here. Yes, she could if she had to. Let's check some scores for you with 59 seconds to go in the third quarter. Arkansas over Houston. Arizona leading Cal. Joe Capps had a tough year. And Mercyhurst over Duquesne. That is a final. Second and one. Berger gives it to Ware, and Ware has the first down as he gets to the 49-yard line. Tim Brando's dance card appears to be full, and I uh, hope we don't run into any more homecoming games. <laughs> Making me feel bad. Well, Butts did it, number 92, he did his celebration earlier. They're paying him back now. No way he's going to make the tackle on me. And you know, Reggie Ware is another example of Auburn having so many talented people in specialized positions, short yardage and goal line, he is awful tough. Ware and Jesse are the running backs. This is Jesse. Flag is down. He gets to the 40, 39 yard line. Knocked down by Martin. Number 58 was an end attack along with Gary Frank, 54 downfield, and the penalty will go against Auburn. Second string offensive line is in for the Auburn Tigers, trying to get them some experience. Well, if we do the homecoming game for the Harvard uh, campus, Timmy might get invited to the museum. That's the best he might hope for there. <laughs> That's what they do at Harvard homecoming. Well, they'll ask him his SATs, not his age. Everybody gets over and looks at the artifacts. Still first down. Holding against Auburn.
Backup center, 66, John Hudson's going to do the holding right here. On the nose guard, he's got to hold him right outside. That's an easy call for the official. But he doesn't give up. Notice the way he follows through on his block. In that case, he got in trouble doing it. First and 15. Fake to Jesse, they want to throw. Berger throws complete. He's got lawyer Tillman again. And Tillman down to the 28, maybe the 27 yard line. And Tillman has made big catches tonight. Well, he's made some nice catches tonight, but I'll tell you, Jeff Berger is laying the ball in there on the line. This is a nice throw, about 20 yards deep across the middle. Play action pass, no problem with the protection. They're blocking very well. A lot of second string linemen in there, by the way. And now he'll just nail it right over the middle. He almost broke this. You can't throw a ball any better than that. That is the end of the third quarter. 15 minutes to go from Starkville. It's 35 to nothing, Auburn. Starting the fourth quarter, it has been all Auburn, and they have it first and 10, deep in Mississippi State territory again. Where? Stacked up this time by William French, pick number 78. I think the difference in this Auburn football team from a year ago when they were so Bo Jackson oriented is the passing game and they have done a great job tonight and all year Pat. Well they've almost doubled the yardage for six games as you can see and I really you got to give Pat Sullivan credit for that. He took Jeff Berger who didn't have big numbers in, in high school only threw for 1100 yards a senior year. Actually more of a runner 700 yards running. Look what he's done. Improved the percentage and the yardage and the touchdowns with fewer interceptions. You can't ask for more than that. Second and four. Mississippi State showing blitz. They just got the handoff to Joseph. And Joseph finds a way to get some yardage out of him down to the 18-yard line. Darren Martin was the man coming. Or was it Martin on the tackle? Martin on the tackle. There's Pat Sullivan. He uh, broke a lot of hearts in the Ivy League when they gave him the Heisman Trophy winner right behind. They gave him the Heisman Trophy instead of Ed Marinero. A lot of people were disappointed in the Ivy League. Ed, I know, he threw a party. No one, you know, he didn't win it. Oh, remember, in the Ivy League, uh, he threw a party and everybody went to the library. That's right. There is the Heisman Trophy. And Pat Sullivan, I'll tell you what, he earned it. He and Terry Beasley just connected all year long. I hope he doesn't still have that tie. <laughs> Maybe he gave it to you, Pat. I'm ignoring you guys. <laughs> no way. Call the game, Mike. All right. It's first and 15 after the penalty for the Tigers. 13.49 to go in the ball game. They have the ball at the Mississippi State 22. Berger remains in there. He's got Joseph on a wing. And throws incomplete. Trying to hit Scott Bolton. But it was underthrown. One of the few poor passes he's thrown tonight. Well, there's two things that are relatively surprising here. First of all, teams don't expect Auburn to throw so well, which they have. But they're still throwing the ball, and they're up 35-0. What do you think? What's the strategy there, Coach? Uh, I think it's a lot uh, like several coaches who decide that they are going to run their offense, and if the other team is just loading up on something, they're not going to let their kids beat up. They want to run their offense the way it's designed, and I don't see anything wrong with that. I, I don't really think they're trying to run up the score, even though that may be the result. Second and 15. Joseph and Harris, 10 and 21, are in the backfield. Berger wants it all and overthrows Lawyer Tillman. Good coverage that time by the Mississippi State defense. Milton Smith was back there. Well, they went for it all here. Second down long, he drops back. Again, plenty of time, and this helps every quarterback. When you have this kind of time, he just barely overthrow this ball. Six foot four, you want to put the ball up, but that's a little high. You know, ironically, though, Mike, earlier this year, we saw Miami in the first game of the year, and they were way ahead in Testa Verde was throwing and actually heard his statistics, which Berger is doing today. Maybe they don't have that same intensity or something because they're really not connecting as they did earlier. Could be. Look at the total offensive yards, 422 to 129. Auburn has done it in every category tonight. Joseph on the delay. Won't get much. Gets to about the 21-yard line, maybe the 22 -yard line. And this is going to bring on Chris Knapp to try the field goal. We'll find out if his leg's tired out from all those kickoffs. 
Knapp's quite a story. He left the team in the spring, came back in the fall. He had split duties with Chris Johnson. Johnson, the other place kicker a year ago. Johnson dropped out of school with academic difficulties, and Knapp came back and has done a great job for the time. Thirty-eight yard field goal attempt. He didn't get much of that one. Probably the first mistake that Auburn made tonight. <laughs> 12.49 to go in the ball game. It is still Auburn 35, Mississippi State nothing. 49 seconds to go in the ball game. It's 35 nothing Auburn, and Rocky Felker has had a long night after his club game in 6 and 1. Don Smith wants to go back to throw. Sideline complete. Got Clark. Run out of bounds by Porter. Here is what. Auburn has done so far this year. 42-14 over Tennessee Chattanooga. 45-0 over East Carolina. 34-8 over Tennessee. 55-6 over Western Carolina. 31-9 over Vanderbilt. 31-10 over Georgia Tech. The least points they've scored in the game is 31. The most they've given up is 14. Smith on a first and 10 sends Hadley in motion. Most of the second team defense is in there. Complete to Clark. Clark brought down by Arthur Johnson, the strong side safety. And Mississippi State trying to move the football here and salvage some pride out of this. Well, these are the type of patterns the last two plays they should have been running the whole night. Run the guy off deep on the outside and then come back with a hook. Hadley will take the guy deep and then he'll, Clark will hook right underneath and he hits him right in the zone. When you're playing that deep zone, it's been there all night. It's not like they're playing deeper now because they're up 35 nothing. Run those routes down the sideline, fake the go pattern, then come to the hook in the middle. It's been a good trip for the Auburn Tigers over here. Some 8,000 made the trek. Phillips in motion. Smith throws to Phillips. Tried to get away, but Shan Morris made the big open field tackle, brought him down at the 38. He's made nice tackles the whole night. That's one thing about the Auburn uh, secondary. Not only do they not give up the big play, they are very good tacklers. And they just, uh, they don't give up the big play on short passes or runs either. They come up, they support well, and they drop the guy. They don't even give up the little play. They've been almost perfect tonight. Came in as the number one team in the United States against the score, giving up 7.8 points a game. And they're pitching a shutout right now. Robinson, the fullback, trying to get the first down. Gets to the 34-yard line where Brian Smith and Kurt Crane make the stop. Well, the statistic that uh, Pat Dye was particularly proud of in that secondary is uh, they led the conference uh, giving up 44% uh, completion rate by the opposing quarterbacks. And when you can do that, it takes a lot of pressure off the uh, front four or five guys to stop the run. That's right. Auburn looks to be... Uh, about as good as you can get in college football. Uh, they, Miami, and Penn State, after uh, the stunning loss by Nebraska and Alabama getting beat today, those are going to be your top three, I think. Going for the first down. Chip Powell makes the stop. And that's Jeff Patton into the ball game for the first time. Got some scores coming your way. Middle of the six, 2-2, Boston and the Mets. Red Sox up 3-2. LSU laying it on North Carolina, 30-3. Arkansas, fourth quarter over Houston, 23-13. California still down, now 6-0 to, to Arizona. And Auburn's got it. Porter recovers. It goes from bad to worse for the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. Well, I just think it's a case. Mississippi State had one Don Smith, and Auburn has about nine or ten of them. And I just don't think one man right. can change the game. Well, this was their nicest drive of the whole night, and it's going to be uh, it's going to end in a fumble. Look like they might go in and score on this drive. It's a simple drive. Had a nice. He gets stripped. That's the thing about Auburn. I was just going to mention it a moment ago. They are still intense. They're not slowing down in this game. They're throwing the ball. They're playing tough on defense. They must want that shutout awfully bad. Auburn has the football, and Reggie Slack, number 17, is your new quarterback. 
Slack will give it off to Jesse. Jesse trying to break it big. 45, 46, 47 yard line. Brought down by Bruce Plummer. They just keep throwing talent at you. As I said, they're not losing any intensity. They don't care that they're winning 35 nothing. They're gonna keep running their offense. They're gonna block the guys out of the way and give it to these tailbacks. This time Jesse takes it, he's got the opening. And he'll break some tackles too. Jesse uh, has six carries tonight for 40 yards, and he's uh, third string, second string tailback. Ware and Jesse, the running backs behind Slack. That's Jesse. He is stacked up by Jesse Anderson. Tim Brando has something for us from the sideline. Tim. Over here on the Auburn side, everyone's happy, including Ben Tamarillo Sr., whose son is an Outland candidate, the starting center. You're a nutritionist and a weightlifter. Tell me about the day-to-day -day relationship with your son. Well, when Ben finished high school, we just got in a program where we'd work out once a day, and I put him on a program where he'd eat substantial food on a daily basis, and he, he worked hard, and he ate like I asked him to, and he grew. He grew. Tell me about that. What 1,000-calorie diet are we talking about? I put him on a 6,600-calorie 6, diet a day, which is a low-fat diet, but a lot of food, a lot of carbohydrates, a lot of protein, and uh, I almost had to force feed him. He ate about six times a day, and it, it's really a job to do it, but he worked hard, and uh, you know, Ben did it. I know it's working well. Thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it. We've all heard that story about a father, a son, a bat, and a ball. In this case, with the Tamarellas, it's father and son and uh, a barbell or two. And a fork and a knife. A knife and a fork. That's right, maybe two. 6,600 calories. I've seen Mac and Al eat that much for lunch. This is Vincent Harris, backup fullback. And I am still, I might add, a spelt. spelt 216 pounds, six foot seven. Reggie Slack, the freshman out of Milton, Florida, looking to the sideline to pick up a play. No, he's picking up the slack. I knew you'd say that. Eight minutes and 33 seconds. It's easy. Eight minutes and 33 seconds to go in the ball game. That was our producer, John Wildhack. He gets credit for the bad ones. Second and three. Harris again. Harris has not had much of a chance to carry the ball this year. Coming into this one, he had uh, caught three passes. Getting a chance to work out. Rocky Felker, who had taken the headsets off a little earlier, I guess decided to put them back on. Well, Vincent Harris, you said he really hasn't had the ball very much this year. He only ran for 1,700 yards, averaged 6.5, and had... 22 touchdowns a senior year in high school. Probably thinking he'd come in here and uh, light the world on fire, but all the people they have around him and in front of him, it's so tough to get in the game. Joseph and Ware, now the running back. This is Ware. Slack does a good job of carrying out fakes. If they go to play action and he throws, uh, as he did once before, you'll see where he, he keeps his hands up there to disguise it from the defensive lineman. Want to thank our statistician Ware, Chuck Freeby as always, and then our spotter John Lewandowski, who did a great job for us. John is from Auburn, so he's had a good night up here in the booth. Second down and three. So Don Smith, 18 out of 30, 147 yards, but two interceptions. And really, it's not really Smith's fault. Uh, they came loaded for him. He was a marked man by that great Auburn defense. Second and three. Joseph is down near a tailback. And here's Slack on the naked roll. And he broke the tackle and may have gotten the first down. There's a flag down at the 20 yard line. They just don't go down. Any of their running backs, including their quarterbacks, they break tackles on every play. And it's close enough to measure for the first down. Here's the penalty call. And they'll get it one way or another as Mississippi State is offside. Auburn is going to go to 7 and 0 on the year. They just remind me an awful lot of Miami, just as far as their talent, their really intensity, do. the blend between the running and passing. Offside, defense, first down. And it is a first down at the 15. We'll get to see that other great team in the country next Saturday night from Morgantown, West Virginia, when Penn State comes in. And really, they they beat up on Alabama today. Penn State's 
lot tougher. Again, they always look better. People think they only win in the East, and they go out and they beat the big teams sure. in the South and the West also. And they look slow in those old uniforms and the, the black high tops. Harris is stacked up, never got back to the line of scrimmage. They may look slow, but they aren't. And they're strong. And John Schaefer's a uh, fine passer. And they got DJ Dozier, who's a great running back. We'll be on the air at 7 o'clock for the pregame show. Chris, Larry, and Vino. And they also have Shane Conlon I don't, as linebacker. And I don't think he takes backseat to any linebacker I don't in the think country, so including the ball. I don't think so either. Got Duke Donaldson, number 29, checks in the ballgame at a flanker spot. There you see the clock. We're approaching the six-minute mark in Starkville. It's been very quiet since the start of the ballgame. Even though this is the biggest on-campus crowd in the history of Mississippi football, Auburn just came out so strong, they took the crowd out of it. And we'll have a delay on this call. That's not the biggest crowd they've ever had right now. A lot of people leave. No, they're, uh, uh, they're off to the parties, I think. To which we have been invited. Euchre could get a good seat tonight, couldn't he? Of course, it says, as Charlie Carr, the athletic director, he was asking me how we all got here. And he said, you know what? You really have to want to come to Starkville. And I said, that's right, Charlie. You can't find it by accident. You're just not going to run into Starkville. you got to be pointed in this direction. A lot of detours on the way, I might add, too. Second and 18. Slack back to throw. All day. Now he's pressured out of the pocket and wants to run. Looking for a block and slides at the 25 and Jesse Anderson. Here's the way Auburn has done it. They started the scoring 7 0 with Ware and a one yard run. Then Fullwood broke it loose for 88, made it 14 0. Fullwood again, nine yards out for 21 0. Ware came in, the short yard is full back to make it 28 0 and a one yard run. And Fullwood got his third touchdown of the night, a five yard run, and that's where we stand at 35 0. The amazing thing is that nine yard touchdown run actually may have been better than the 88 yard That was a that great run. Uh -oh. That block was by James Joseph. And there now Joseph has a chance to carry the football. And Jesse Anderson has it. Boy, Joseph threw a block on the last play on Cedric Force. And this will bring in Chris Knapp. Cedric Force was in on that last tackle. That's a problem. Sometimes you throw a block. That's what, as a receiver, I didn't want to throw blocks because then the guys might hit me later. You know, you don't that was your excuse, right? Yeah, that was my excuse. Well, here's one man did that the coach, like, did the coach buy that? No, that's why I ended up a punter. <laughs> but here's a man who'd like to uh, pick up his evening. Chris Knapp's disappointing. This is last field goal. As a kicker, your job's never done. Doesn't matter if you win by 40. You want to do a good job. 42 yard attempt. Got this one. But it's wide. Plenty of distance, but wide right, and Chris Knapp misfires. He'll be depressed tonight, even though they won. Yeah. Timeout, 4.07 left to go. It's still Auburn big. That's from Huntsville, Alabama. I'm off wherever you are. Yeah. Well, I don't know if she'd want to claim it's, him. Anyway. It's a zoo somewhere, I guess. The new quarterback Mike Davis into the ball game for Mississippi State. He'll give it off to Peters, and Peters whacked at the 31-yard line. Russ Carricker in on the tackle. Davis, redshirt freshman, 6'2", 180. The Caps went over New Jersey, 2-1. Pittsburgh. Well, they had that string broken, but they're rolling again. They beat Philadelphia. The Rangers of Montreal tied in the third. Detroit over St. Louis after two periods of play. Second down, six yards to go. Davison, quarterback for Smith. Throws across his body, complete to Kennebrew. And Kennebrew to the 43-yard line. Kennebrew, a sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia. A lot of Atlanta players on this club. Yeah, it's unbelievable they just showed those hockey scores. You realize if this World Series goes to a seventh game on Monday, we will have had, this weekend we'll have four professional sports going at the same time. Baseball, hockey, football, and basketball opens this weekend. Right. Uh, pro wrestling, of course, number one sport in well, California. Like, like you said, there's four pro teams going. 
Davis to throw again, this time under throws intended for Jerry Myers. Been a good night for Auburn. They're up 35 nothing. Why would the Tiger care where his mom is? Look what he's got around him. <laughs> I personally, of course, would care where my mom is, but yes. Those women like animals. Is she in Cincinnati or California? She's in actually in Cincinnati right now, though. I'll be home tomorrow and I get to see my parents are coming out. Alright. Say hello for me. Uh, glad to, I sure will. They want to meet you sometime. No, they don't. You're just saying that. Second and ten. Myers in motion. Davis back to throw. Three-man rush. Goes complete this time at the 44-yard line to Kennebrew. And we understand Tim Brando is in trouble. The law has found him. Uh, look, Ma, no cuffs. No cuffs on this man. But I will tell you this. I do have some Bama State Troopers with me. You know what? Bear Bryant started the tradition of long time. That's right. Alabama State Troopers. Bear Bryant started the tradition to have state troopers with him on the sidelines. Coley Clayton is with me to my left. Ralph Cottingham to my right. Coley, now uh, you're in the brochure, the Auburn brochure. Are you a celebrity at, on the plains of Auburn? Not really. You're not? No. Well, you're going to be a celebrity after this. I want to talk a little bit with you, Ralph, about the, the other duties. I mean, we always see at the end of the game with Coach Dye going out to, for the handshake. But what else do you guys do? Well, we travel in advance with the football team, and we meet with the local authorities and set up the routes that the football team is going to travel while they're in the city. Now, now listen, we all have a, a, a late flight in Birmingham about an hour and a half after the game. You think you guys could give us a police escort to get out of here? No, but we'll tell the Mississippi Troopers you're coming. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, if we get out of the Magnolia State, guys, we're going to be golden. Auburn is leading. They're golden right now. One left, the Auburn band hooping it up here in Starkville with a 35-0 lead. Mississippi State has the football, first and 10. Mike Davis, the freshman quarterback. They'll give it off to number 43. Demetrius Swopes into the ball game for the first time. Rodney Garner makes the tackle. And our player of the game, not much of a choice this week. It's Brent Fullwood, the senior tailback. 16 carries, 179 yards. Look at the average. That's better than the season's average, which was 9.4. And he really earned the player of the game honors. Davis back to throw and throws incomplete, trying to hit Myers. There's Brent Fullwood. Fresh, you come into a game averaging 9.4, so even, like you said earlier, a five-yard touchdown actually hurts your average. He comes and he tops it. He goes over 11 tonight. Big night against Tennessee earlier in the ballgame, 207 yards. You've got to say he has done more than an adequate job of filling in for Bo Jackson. The question is, will he play baseball or football? <laughs> And Auburn, I think, is, is a better team this year because of the diversity on their offense, and they have a superb defense. Third and ten for Davis with a minute 57 to go. Wants a screen and throws incomplete for Robinson. Had the screen set up, just didn't throw it very well. Well, you made the right point there, uh, Mike. I actually tried to say that in the pregame. I didn't do it very well. But when you do have a passing offense, the reason he has such a large average this year is they're spreading out the defense and he's breaking big plays. You know, when Bo was there, he'd have so many carries and he'd still break out the big plays but he'd have so many small ones because they were just keying in on him they can't do that with Fullwood. would have liked to see what uh, Bo could have done in pro football it would be interesting to see him play I think he's going to be a fine baseball player 336 yards on the ground for Auburn Mississippi State only 27 and they're a fine rushing team fourth down and they'll go for it on fourth and ten Davis under pressure this time throws complete to Myers and Myers should have enough for the first down. Chip Powell knocked him out of bounds. Stopped the clock with a minute 46 to go. Rocky Felker would like to see his club get on the scoreboard. That would take some of the sting away. And this was only the start of the uh, meat grinder for Mississippi State. They've got Alabama, LSU, and Mississippi. That follows, of course, Auburn after having played Syracuse, Tennessee, Southern Mississippi, Florida, Memphis State, Arkansas State, and Tulsa. Alabama will not be in a good mood next week. Oh, no. Bad week to play. Not after being roughed up by Penn State today. Davis on the delay to Swoops. And Swoops is nailed as he got to the line of scrimmage. Russ Carricker made the tackle. 
Here's what Auburn has coming up at Florida, and they have been down this year. Cincinnati, a team that just plays a wicked schedule. Then Georgia, maybe not as strong as the dogs have been in the past. And then they finish it up, as always, at Alabama, and that should be a war. It might be for the SEC championship. Probably will be, although LSU will have something to say about it for sure. Second and eight. Davis. And that's complete to Jerry Myers at the 25-yard line. Well, Mike Davis, uh, number nine, who's playing quarterback now, actually uh, a rarity for a quarterback. He came in as a walk-on. He's a non-scholarship player. And really, he's the future of this team. Unless they get somebody uh, very good in, out of high school. It sure is, because Don Smith is a senior. Throwing again, complete to Kennebrew, and Kennebrew to the 16-yard line first down. Powell again on the tackle. That'll stop the clock while they move the chains with 42 seconds to go. You got to feel bad for Don Smith. You know, when you're such a great athlete, yeah. you don't really get an opportunity to showcase it in the biggest game of your career. It's got to be awfully disappointing for him. And now Mississippi State will call a timeout, and they want to talk over how they might be able to get it in the end zone. It's still 35-0. crowd really fit out here as their club has fallen behind 35 nothing and it's almost over Davis wants to go to the end zone touchdown Jerry Myers Maybe that was the key. You call a timeout before every big play set it up. And throw the post to the middle against that right. zone. That was a nice pass. So Davis gets the first touchdown pass of his career. And Mississippi State gets on the board. Let's see if they'll bring in Artie Cosby for the point after, or would they go for two? Well, they earned a scholarship right there. And they will go for two. Clark in motion. And Clark can't bring it down. Let's watch Jerry Meyer score. First thing for uh, Mississippi State all night. They ran a nice timing route. He slows up, nice throw, takes it in for the touch. So Mississippi State gets on the scoreboard with 38 seconds to go in the ball game. 5-6, Auburn over Mississippi State. 38 seconds left to go in this one. Young, loyal fans. Everybody needs them. They still have heroes in that Mississippi State team. Sure, That's and great. they should, too. Don Smith's going to win them a couple more ball games before this season, though. And Rocky Felker, there's the onside kick. And that was one of those uh, bulldozer effects where they line up everybody okay. in the center of the field, and you say, oh, no, they kicked it to me. Well, that was an interesting kickoff because they never really spread out or anything. It was like they were conversing. They tried to trick Auburn, but Auburn was awake. <laughs> they just fell on it. You might have an argument there. They may be close to number one in the country. They may be. They are a tough team. They're sure going to be one of the top three. They'll give it to the fullback, Marvell McKelvin. And this may be the last play of the ball game. They may not have to do it again. That was such an odd play last week, actually. Don Smith against Tulane was injured when, the, you know, as a quarterback, he took the ball and ran out the clock, just knelt down, and the guy fell on his ankle. So maybe Auburn saw that, and they're going to run the ball and give it to their uh, backs. Right. And they are not going to have to get off another play. That'll be it as the clock is down to nine seconds. And Auburn has rung up an impressive victory here in Starkville, Mississippi, taking Mississippi State 35 to 6 in a game that most of us thought was going to be a lot closer than this. But Auburn is just so strong in every area. And they've got individual talent, they've got team talent, size, and speed. And of course, with Pat Dye, they have excellent coaching. I think really as a team, they've rallied together. They said, hey, we had Bo Jackson before. People thought that's all we were. Kind of similar to the Virginia basketball team a few years ago after Ralph Sampson left to go to the right. pros. They went to the Final Four the next year. It's over here in Starkville. 35-6 Auburn is our final. We'll be back in a moment. Our 
final score, the Auburn Tigers, very impressive in a 35-6 victory against the Mississippi State Bulldogs. And right now, they're looking very tough for a possible national championship and SEC crowd. I'm joined by Jeff Berger, the quarterback, along with Brent Fullwood. And Jeff, tonight you really had everything working, and I got the impression that everything in the offensive package was utilized. Well, uh, we came right out, and uh, we knew that we had to control the ball control the ball game on our offense, you know, keep the ball away from Don Smith. And uh, we just got on the roll there, and uh, things went our way. And, uh, you know, when things happen like that, then you can score some points like the way. I know it's nice to have running backs like Fullwood and AJ get the job done for you. That opens it up for that play-action pass on first down. That was a very successful play for you over the middle of the field tonight. Well, that's what we were doing. I mean, uh, they were reacting to the run so much because Brent and, and the guys were doing such a good job running the football, and the offensive line was coming off so well. And then we could mix in our play action passes and they work for us. Tell me about the impression that Pat Sullivan has had on this offense and Berger in particular. Well, he's helped me 100 percent. He's been behind me. He's given me confidence. That's the most thing that, that really I needed from last year. He came right in, told me he believed in me and uh, he's helped me mechanically throwing the football. And, you know, I feel like a different player than I was last year. All right, Jeff, thank you for stopping by. We thank appreciate you. it. Now, Brett Fullwood at the end of the first half, you were in a bit of pain, and I know you had a viral infection earlier in the week. Did you get that IV at halftime? And if so, how did it affect you in the second half? Well, it was just be, I just had, I was sick earlier in the week, and then I had missed Tuesday practice, but I went back and finished on practicing the rest of the week. And then at half, well, right at, before halftime, I was getting real nauseated, and my stomach was bothering me a lot, and I went and told the coach. And Coach Dye told him to go ahead and take me on in and give me an IV, so I went on in and it's settled my stomach, and I feel great. Now you had 154 yards with a nauseated stomach. You may be dangerous when you help when healthy. <laughs> I don't know. The, way, the offensive line blocked excellent today. And I can't ask for no more. If they block like that, then I run. If everything else takes place. Brent, you know, last year it was almost a lock. Bo Jackson had the Heisman. Now everyone says Vinny Testaverde deserves the Heisman because of the win against Oklahoma. People here were happy about Don Smith going into this game. They felt that he deserved some attention. How about Brent Fullwood? You're sitting right now at nearly 1,000 yards after eight games. Do you think you should be a candidate? Well, I don't, I don't go out and want to be a candidate for the Heisman. I go out to play and win for my team and do the best that I can. Let me ask you also about this uh, offense that's been installed and the Pat Sullivan uh, impression because it, it definitely is noticeable that this offense is far different from the one that Bo started in a year ago. Yeah, our offense is like our offense have to defense have to play us honest. Now they just can't sit out and say they're going to stop our run. They have to stop our pass and also our run. And if the defense got to do all that, they, are, they can't guess that done. They have to play us honest. Thank you, Brent, for stopping by. All right, thank you. Brent Fullwood was full of big plays tonight and leading Auburn to a 35 to 6 win. Mike? 16 carries, 179 yards for Brent Fullwood. It was a great night for him, a great night for the rest of the Auburn offense and the Auburn defense as they win it 35 to 6. And now, tonight's Cannon Play of the Game is selected by our ESPN staff. Brought to you by Cannon. So advanced, Cannon is the world's leader in 35 millimeter photography. And our play of the game is Brent Fullwood going 88 yards early in the ball game, more than half of his yardage on the night. And he showed balance, power, and then blazing speed as he outran the Mississippi State secondary. And that play, Pat McAnally broke it open. Oh, that, no question, it broke the back of that defense, gave him the 14-0 lead, and they never looked back from there. What a weapon. Fullwood for Bo Jackson, and the drop-off in quality is non-existent. We'll be back with more from Starkville, Mississippi, right after this. I've always been afraid of two things, flying and good cameras. But with this Canon T70, I'm not afraid. This push-button T70 is so easy to use, I can even get the tough shot. And now you can get a $25 rebate. Great shot. Once again, our final score tonight from Starkville, Mississippi. Auburn 35, Mississippi State 6. Coming up next, Larry and Vino host the Hartford Insurance Group College Football Report. ESPN's live coverage of Thursday night college football continues Thursday, October 30th at 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 Pacific, when Fresno State hosts Fullerton State. And next Saturday, join Pat, Tim, and me for live CFA action when Penn State visits West Virginia. Coverage begins at 7 p.m. Eastern with the Mercury College Football Scoreboard Show.
A great night for Brent Fullwood. This is his nine yard touchdown run where he not only shows agility but tremendous power and balance after five hits and he finds a way to get into the end zone. Fullwood, a senior, has done the job, averaging over 10 yards a carry the entire season as Auburn remains undefeated. For Pat McAnally and Tim Brando, this is Mike Patrick. Say goodnight from Starkville. Let's join the Hartford Insurance Group College Football Report. All right, so.